time. All praises. It's looking like it right now. Definitely looking like it. All the stuff that's going on all over. Uh, Praise to the Most High. He continues to do his will and put this work in on Esau's kingdom. Uh, all right, we give it another uh, another about five minutes, and we're going to go ahead and start Iron Sharpens Iron, House of Israel's Tuesday night class. All praises. <clears throat> Give it another couple of minutes for everybody to log in and get tonight's class started. <clears throat> How's everybody else doing? Everybody else good? Oh, uh, So I made you a uh, host, uh, yeah, so, so you could, um, you know, shut the class down and stuff when, when everything is over. You can stop recording, stop the live stream. And all of the above, you got the oh. power, brother. <laughs> okay, God, God. Once, um, once we get done with class, I'll jump on there, and I'll shut it out, shut it down. So, probably gonna try in tonight's Tuesday. So, try and keep it within the two and a half hour mark, starting at about nine. So, try and finish by eleven thirty. I know everybody got to get some sleep and get some rest. Try and try not to go too too long, but got a couple of good um couple of good lessons. All praise to the Most High. But since I have been staying up, that was one thing. At least this week, since uh for the last couple of weeks, actually, Most High have been having me work on some lessons. So I actually got a couple of lessons put together, and um you know of course we're gonna go through one of them tonight, and then you know in the future, Most High willing get an opportunity to to do another one and um got some hopefully some interesting lessons that everybody will be able to enjoy and participate and, and learn something from give some glory to, to the most high so all praises if you have the ability to share the class go ahead and share the class with uh your friends with your family with brothers and sisters that are in the body and we're going to go ahead and, and uh, jump things off in the next couple minutes. All praises to the Most High. Make sure you share the class. And that would be great. I believe you could do it if you go into where it says participants at the bottom of the screen. If you scroll all the way down, there's a link to invite it. But you also can um, can send out a link to to your friends, your family. Send out a link. Put it on. If you got a, a link, put it on Clubhouse. Put it on uh, you know your social media pages. Invite um, invite your, your your friends, your family. Invite others from the body to learn with us and to to break this spiritual bread with us as we um, as we continue to do it, do our Tuesday and our Wednesday and Thursday night classes. We want to have, um, you know, as much people, especially from the house of Israel, much people from our congregation and our, and our body here learning together and growing together. We all on the same page and on one accord. And uh, of course, you know, you can share our uh, our camp videos when we go out on Fridays and uh, Saturdays going out on the Shabbat. Also, HOI New York, New Jersey goes out on Wednesdays. Usually can find those videos with uh, with our brother Joshua. Uh, you got HOI Illinois, uh, Captain Aria and Nadiv are usually, and Gabar usually post the videos for HOI Illinois. Um, when Priest Abak is on the West Coast, uh, you can always check Priest Abak's channel and you can get uh, live updates for uh, for camp out on the West Coast or on the East Coast, wherever wherever our our elder is. Um, he actually did a pretty good uh, movie review that the couple days ago. So if you haven't checked that out, check out the HOI uh Elder Priest of Box movie review. It was a it was I didn't even know this movie that he had done a review on was out in theaters. So it was definitely a good um a good review. I think everybody would enjoy that as well. But do your best to um you got HOI Philly that's that's always uh up on either Instagram or Facebook for uh the Shabbat 
And then on uh on the Shabbat, we have HOI uh Philly has classes, Shabbat classes. So make sure you're tuning in. Um, you also can tune in on the Shabbat to Clubhouse. Uh the sisters do a, a very good class on Clubhouse uh on, on Sundays as well as on the Shabbat. I believe Sister Ma and Sister Briar, they both have uh, rooms. Um, Sister Javera. Uh, so make sure you tune in to our sisters and, and go and support their classes as well. Um, all right. So we're going to uh, Shalom family, Shalom brother Malachi. If we have anybody uh, who can read for us tonight, if there's anybody on that can read for us, uh, let me know. If not, I can do all most right. of the I didn't get in touch with Asha Yar, Cap. So I don't know if you yeah, want to get out. I'll be the reader tonight. Yeah, okay. No, I'll be the reader tonight. Okay, all praises. It's a lot of, mo mostly the scriptures, Cap. Uh, I'll have you read any of the other, like it's a few of the other, um, a few links that I'm going to go to, but um, I'll read off the links. You don't got to worry about that. I'm, I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see them. But all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of our of his only begotten son, our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who the world calls Jesus Christ. We give double honors to our elders of the house of Israel and uh, honors to the, the mighty men of valor, the virtuous women of the nation of Israel, honor to the men out there doing the work on the highways and the hedges and doing the fishing and feeding the sheep of Yahweh Shai. And honor to all of those who keep his commandments and uh, try to grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Lord's statutes and commandments and keep faith in Yahweh Shai. This is the House of Israel, Tuesday night, Iron Sharpens Iron class. Again, we're going to ask that uh, you share the class if you have the ability to. Anybody who's on the class, you're welcome to participate. Please just say Salakia uh, and uh, you know state your name. You you can uh, give us a question, a comment. Uh, or, or a thought, uh, but definitely share your thoughts, your questions, and your comments throughout class. Uh, please say Salakia. I really don't look at or keep eye on the chat. So if you do put a verse, a scripture, or a comment in the chat, it, it might get overlooked. So it's better just to speak up and say Salakia if you have the ability to. If not, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and run through the chat a little bit later on um, as class goes on. Well, again, sorry. John Mitch class. Sometimes we do that. Let's stay up. All right. All praises to the Most High. I'm your brother Yawasak. Our Captain Ariya is going to be our reader for tonight. All praises to the Most High. And let's go ahead and jump right in. Let me see if I can share it. Share the screen. Khan, everybody can see the screen, right? Khan. Khan, all great. All right, so as I said, I've been working on some lessons, Cap, so I got a few lessons, man. The most high been, been giving me some good ideas, man. I got a lesson on the music, lesson on husbands and wives, lessons on uh, the conspiracy theories. Tonight, we're just going to go into a lesson on the, it's called the creativity and the ingenuity of the 12 tribes of Israel. So that's going to be tonight's lesson, the creativity and the ingenuity of the 12 tribes of Israel. But we got some, we got some locked in, uh, locked in there, Cap. So, you know, whenever you call on me, I got one ready for you. Let me see if I can share the screen. All right, so let's go ahead. The creativity and the inventions of the 12 tribes of Israel. So our, uh, you know, our our ancestors, our forefathers were very creative and very um, and 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 very good at creating things that would be used throughout the course of history. And, you know, we still to this day use inventions that were created by our people. A lot of times when we we're at camp, we'd speak about the black inventors. You know, we we have a history month, black history month. And and at certain times and certain uh, certain of us will, will have gone through and done done uh, essays and, and read articles and different things. Our children, they really don't teach teach these things mm -hmm. to children nowadays. But 
with a lot of uh, inventions that have been created, and not only by just uh, the so-called African American man, but the so-called Native American and Seminole Indian has also invented a lot of things that we use. And in in doing this lesson and putting this lesson together, I I, I said to myself, I said, I don't want to just go through the 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 southern tribes i want to go through the northern tribes as well and find out some of the things that the so-called hispanic man and the, and the so-called native american and seminole indian has invented as well as focus on some of the things that the so-called uh african-american and caribbean man has has, uh, has created so it's, it's about the ingenuity of our people our people are so smart and our, our people uh have found ways to con to keep society going and to keep this world from from basically uh, going back into the Stone Age, because the, the white man is a caveman, comes from the caves of of, uh, of Georgia, Russia, the Caucasus Mountains, right? And and although he does have uh, some inventions and some uh, some some uh, some things that he can lay hold to, a majority of the inventions that you that are used. To, to to make sure that society flows smoothly and to to help civilization uh continue to move forward were created by our people and created by the by people by by our people that 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 are within the 12 tribes of Israel. And it was actually amazing when I was able to go through some of these inventions and just say to myself, wow, I, I really had no idea. And that that so many of these things were created by our people. Somebody says Salakia. So it was just very interesting to see some of these things that's been created by not only our people, but again, by the northern tribes and the fact that they don't get credit for it. The fact that we not we don't teach our children, you know, what the 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 northern tribes were, were out there creating and how um ingenuity some of our northern tribe and southern tribe brothers are uh uh uh, from from the tribe of Gad, from the tribe of Naphtali, from the tribe of of uh, Reuben, right, and 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 from the tribe of Manasseh, from the tribe of Issachar, we have so many uh, uh, genius minds, right, inventors and geniuses over the generations, and then also in sports and entertainment. This lesson more so will just go into some of the some of the things that we've achieved, or or some of the greatness that we've achieved in sports. Um, I'm going to save the entertainment side for when we go into the music um, for, for the lesson that 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 because we, we had just went into the studio up in New York and, and the most I kind of put on my heart to do a, a lesson about where the Negro spirituals come from and, and how the Negro spirituals led into blues and led into jazz and led into R&B and led into hip hop, uh, rock and roll, all these different forms of music that. Uh, that our people are in 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 a way exploited for and used for and and have our our, our talent stolen and and our songwriting and our our ability to to play instruments are are uh stolen from us and and used to make the Edomites money and make them billionaires and, and trillionaires but no matter what, the, the soul of the music still originates and still is with our people and in many different forms, you know what I'm saying, from with both the northern and the southern tribes. So we're going to focus a little bit more tonight on the inventors, the the uh, the inventions and some of the sports that our people have excelled at, as well as some of the sports that, that we don't get credit for actually inventing. Right. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, Cap, if you could get Genesis 25 and 23, Barbara Kishaw. Uh -huh. <clears throat> it's the book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 23. When everybody have it, say Khan. Khan. Genesis 25, verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Khan. Two and different the, types of people shall be separated from our form of a Rebecca's bowels, right? So that's how we know, although Esau was Jacob's brother, they were two different types of people. One, his descendants would become cave dwellers. That's the Edomites. That's Esau. That's the Caucasians. They would become cave dwellers. 
right? They would be bottom feeders. They would be warlike, right? They would be used to destroy the world. Esau is the end of the world. So it's two different manner of people. Jacob is the beginning thereof. Jacob would be a plain man dwelling in tents. Jacob would be uh, one of the smartest men. Jacob would be one of the most humblest men, right? Jacob would be the father known as Israel, a prince that has power uh, with, with God and with man, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So it would be um, two, two different people, two different types of people. That's what it means when it says two different manner of people. We're, we're different types of people, right? Read on. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Right. One per one of these people would be stronger than the other. We would be stronger mentally. We would be stronger physically. Right. We would be stronger spiritually. So the 12 tribes of Israel, our people, the so-called African-American, the so-called uh Native American and Seminole Indian, the so-called Hispanic, and to the 12 tribes of Israel, our people that are scattered abroad, we are stronger than Esau. That's how we were able to endure slavery from Egypt to America. That's how we were able to, while going through slavery, come up with types of music, come up with types of inventions, come up with different ways to be ingenuitive, even in the slave fields. In Egypt, we built the cities of, of Ramses, right? In America, we built the cities of America because we're stronger than they are. We have a better mental fortitude than they are, right? And when you understand the power that the Most High has given you as Israelites, you would be able to realize that you, your children, you have the power to, to be so creative because we are children of the creator. We are the chosen of the creator. So the creator who went about and created the entire world, created the entire earth, the universe, we are his chosen people made in his image. And that's the beauty of understanding that, that, that you're an Israelite, that you have power with God and with man. That's what it means to be an Israelite. That's what it means to be a child of Israel. That you are actually a child of the Most High God. We are sons of God, walking and moving in the Spirit, moving by the Spirit. We have to keep the laws. But even in our state, when we weren't keeping the laws, or when we didn't even have the written law as it was written and given to Moses by the finger of God, God still used us. He used us in Egypt. He used us here in America to create things all across the world that has been a benefit to every single, when they always talk about, oh, we'd be a light unto the nations. Yeah, look at the look at the inventions that we created all across the board. And then that's not even taken into account all the things that were stolen from us and patented by the white man as if to say the white man created it. Because there's tons of inventions that were stolen from us during the during our captivity. And that was giving credit to these other nations. As if they were the creators, as if they were the founders. But no, it was actually us. And it was the most high who gave us this ability because he said from the beginning that one would be stronger than the other. Right? And and the reason why the world is messed up today is because. The older, which is Esau, has chosen to make us his servant longer than he should have. He went way far and, and, and beyond what our captivity was supposed to be and took it upon himself to change the narrative. Just like they, 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 they changed the faces of the judges, they changed, they changed history, they changed the times. And this is one of the things that they tried to change. They didn't want to serve us. They try to make us serve them. And that's why you see the world going to hell in a handbag right now. Because of the way Esau tries to change the Most High's word. Change Yahawashai into the image of Caesar Borgia. 
right? So it was two nations in the, in the womb. And these two nations are the two nations that control the narrative of how the whole earth works, right? When the wicked are in control, the whole earth mourns. But when the righteous are in control, the whole earth rejoices, the scriptures say. So the earth is waiting for the 12 tribes of Israel to take over and to rule under Yahweh Shai. Because when Yahweh Shai takes over, the righteous will be out in rule and the whole earth will rejoice. Right? Get Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11, Cap. Bob, good job. Uh -huh. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. And everyone have his say, Khan. Khan. Uh -huh. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. God, the Most High made everything beautiful in his time. So the time is coming where the Most High is going to rearrange the order of things that are on this earth. He's going to put Jacob back on top. He's going to put the Israelites back on top. He's going to, Yahweh Shai has already been given all power and all dominion on the earth. And there's going to be a time now where he comes and he takes back the kingdom and he takes the kingdom and he gives it back to the heavenly father. He gives the people, he makes us again, a people beautified and beautiful in the most high sight. Instead of our righteousness being as filthy rags, instead of us being uh, uh, sinful as a nation, instead of us being a nation that, that, that goes after wickedness, we're going to be a nation that follows after the Lord's statutes and commandments and is righteous and wise. Why is that most high going to do that? The most high is going to do that because he set his love upon us. As we read in Deuteronomy 7 and 7, the most high set his love upon us. And because the most high loves us, it, the, that, that beauty, the beauty of Israel is going to come back in its time. And right now what we see when we look at all these different inventions and we look at all these different things that our people have created, what we see is a small fraction, a shadow of the beauty that is to come. Because imagine if we could create all of these things while in captivity, while under duress, while under the thumb of Esau. At, right after our people being raped, robbed, and murdered. Right after our people being lied to and all of the buffalo being killed, all of the land being stolen, all of uh, 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 the promises being broken, the 40 acres and a mule, and so on and so forth. All of these different things that our people was promised after captivity being broken, but yet our people still could rise above and find some beauty within us, find some light within the darkness to be able to create and make these inventions that would help civilization to move forward. That's because the Most High said everything is beautiful in this time. And in our hearts, he put eternity, right? That's why we seek after the kingdom. That's why we seek after the kingdom first. That's why we seek to serve and to love Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, because it's actually eternity in our hearts. We want to love the Most High and love Yahweh Shai forever. We want to keep his commandments forever. That's been put in the hearts of the Israelites. That's what it means when he put eternity in our hearts. In our hearts, we want to obey the Most High. We want to do the will of the Most High. We want to show the Most High we love him forever. So we put eternity in our hearts that we would keep, that we would have it in our hearts to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments and have faith and trust in the Most High forever, to have our hope in the Most High forever. And that's what we got to teach our, teach each other. We got to teach our family and our children to keep your faith and your trust in the Most High forever and don't give up. Keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. The Most High is going to fulfill his promise. He's not slack concerning his promise. So eternity has been written in our hearts that we would be able to forever keep the laws, statutes, and commandments and love the Most High God. Right? And nobody knows the full work. Nobody, that's why Christ said, nobody knows the day or the hour. That's what it means when it says no one can find out the work. 
that God does from the beginning to the end. Now, that, that's meaning that no man knows the day or the hour. Nobody knows when the end of Esau's kingdom is going to come. We just have all praise to the Most High, open eyes and open ears to the prophecies that the Most High said. These things are going to happen before the end comes. Right before the end comes, nation is going to rise against nation. Right? Right before the end comes, you're going to see all of these earthquakes. You're going to see pestilence and famine and disease. And some people argue, oh, these things have happened before. Oh, there was a world war once. There was a world war twice. Not understanding prophecy. That prophecy speaks of the third world war. The third war is coming and it comes quickly because they don't understand prophecy. So they don't understand that the story was already written from the beginning to the end. And what do we seek? We seek the end of Esau's kingdom and the beginning of the Most High's kingdom in perfection through Yahawashai and through the nation of Israel, keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments here on earth. We seek his kingdom to come. That's why Yahawashai told us to pray. It's one of the first, your kingdom come, your will be done. The first line in the prayer that Yahweh Shai taught the disciples and teaches us to pray that the Most High's will be done, that the Most High's kingdom is to come. Right? Get Romans chapter nine and eleven. Oh, a quick cap. And this is just a reiteration of what was written, right? For all the Christians and the Catholics and and uh, those people who choose not to believe that Esau is the end of the world, that Esau is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That Esau is the white man. This is a reiteration of that verse. This is Paul actually writing and teaching this verse to the Romans. Because there was people that still doubted. Just like there's Israelites right now who doubt that they are Israelites. That's what our work is to go out and do. To feed the sheep. To feed them this bread of life. To, free, to feed them the holy word of the most high God. To get them out of the darkness into the marvelous light by teaching them to repent, by teaching them how to have faith in Yahweh Shai, by keeping his commandments, by keeping the commandments of the Most High God. And in doing so, they will truly be able to repent. That's, that's, that's what we go out to teach people. That's what we go out to teach our people. And in doing so, they will be able to realize that they are Israelites. You can't become an Israelite. Just like you can't become black. You wake up and you're an Israelite. You just got to wake up to the fact that you are an Israelite. Right? Read that for him, Cap. Romans chapter 9, verse 11. When everybody have to say Khan? Khan. Romans chapter 9, verse 11. For the children being not born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Not of works, but of him that calleth, right? So Esau didn't do nothing wrong. Jacob didn't do nothing wrong. Jacob didn't do nothing right. And Esau didn't do nothing right. This was already written before the foundations of the earth, right? It said the children wasn't even born yet. Esau wasn't born. Jacob wasn't born. None of them did good or evil. They was fighting each other in the womb. And it still says none of them even did good or evil. But this is for the purpose of the most high God. Right? According to the election. And who are the elect? The elect are the children of Israel. That we keep the most high's laws, statutes, and commandments. And faith in Yahweh Shah. So that election might stand. So that the purpose of the Most High God would be known and would stand. Not of the works that we do, but of who the Most High called. And who did the Most High call? He called Israel. He called Jacob Israel. And he called us the Israelites. His called, his chosen. His peculiar possession. His inheritance. That's what the Most High calls us. Right? So there was two nations that was in the womb. Two nations that were different from each other. Two people that was different from each other. 
one person is going to be stronger than the other. And the Most High said it wasn't because Esau did anything wrong. We're not out there uh, 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 trying to say, oh, everything we ever did is right because people try and use that against us. Well, Israel broke the law. Israel broke the law. Yeah, we know we broke the law. Now we're trying to keep it again and teach our people to keep it again so that we can uplift our people out of the mud and the miry clay that they stuck in so we can get our people out of this mentality that they in. And get our people to start uh, start thinking like royalty again. And understanding that we are a royal chosen generation. Understanding that we are kings and priests. That we are gods. So we got to dress like it. We got to talk like it. We got we to gotta walk like it. Most of all, we got to treat each other as fellow kings and priests and queens and princesses and princes and gods. We got to deal with each other a certain way and deal with each other with love, right? Because no matter what, again, we have to understand that we're supposed to be able to have such a, a reverence and a fear for the most high that we don't want to disappoint him. And even in the times when we did and we do disappoint the Most High, the Most High still shows us his love. He still sends us a Savior. He sends us a Moses. He sends us a Joshua. He still makes a way of escape for us. Because the Most High set his love upon us and his word can't return back to him void. Right? Uh, you could drop that cap and get Proverbs 8 and 12, Baba Kishore. Oh. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, and verse 12. When everyone have it, say, Khan. Khan. Proverbs, chapter 8, and verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Right, and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. That's because the Most High, he put his wisdom upon us. He put his knowledge upon us. Right. Solomon was talking about having the wisdom and the knowledge to actually invent things. So this goes all the way back to, again, to our people building up the pyramids, building up the city of Ramses. The Most High have, has always established the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of knowledge upon his people. We're supposed to be established in wisdom and knowledge and understanding and discipline and self-control. The Most High put his spirit of wisdom and his spirit of knowledge on his people, the spirit of understanding. He put that spirit upon us, which helps us to understand that we're Israelites and then be able to go out and teach others that they are Israelites because of the Most High's wisdom and his knowledge. But through the Most High's wisdom and his knowledge, we get the ability to invent things. We get the ability to, to become a garment maker. We get the ability to become an author. We get the ability to become an artist. We get the ability to become a musician. We get the ability to uh, make staffs, to make metries and arm guards and head wraps. So you got to tap into your ability. You got to tap into your talent to make jewelry. All of these things are because the most high places wisdom and his knowledge on you and understanding on you. And so many of us and so many of our children have these abilities to make clothes, to make jewelry, to write books, to write songs, to make beats, to teach. There's so many different talents within Israel. So many different talents within the 12 tribes. And we got to tap into that. Don't sleep on your talent. Don't bury your talent. You are stronger than Esau. You are better than Esau. We are better than these other nations. Above all nations. The Most High declared and proclaimed that Israel is the best of the best, 
and the creme de la creme at anything that we do. Just had a brother the other day uh, win at Nassau uh, in like the, the uh, NASCAR. He's the third brother all time to ever win in a NASCAR race. They get scared when we start taking over their sports. Tennis, golf, uh, NASCAR, hockey, all these different sports that at one point in time we were told gymnastics. Right? You got the Olympics coming up. Watch how many brothers and sisters you see in the Olympics winning the track and field uh, events. How many brothers and sisters and, and and track and field is one of the best because you got you got Benjamin ver versus uh, Judah in track and field. And they always have great matchups. They always have great meets. When you pay when you put Benjamin and Judah against each other and we not going to war trying to fight each other. We just having a, a friendly competition. To see uh -huh. who's. Right. It's amazing when you watch how good our people are at all of these different uh, sporting events. We starting to take over swimming too. one point in time. They told us black people couldn't swim. Now you got a sister who's 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 out there swimming. And I think a brother, too, is a brother and a sister. I forget their name. But at the last Olympics, they showed out and they got their medal. They got on the medal podium. Going all the way back to the Olympics when we put in, in track and field, when we raised up the black, the, the the fist with the black glove, going all the way till now, where you got the, the Usain Bolts and Shikari Richardsons and and uh and the Elaine Thompsons and everybody. One people shall be stronger than the other. And it shows in these different sporting events. It shows in all these different sports that are that are worldwide sports. Look at baseball. The Northern Tribe took baseball over. It's supposed to be the American pastime. The Northern Tribe took that thing over. Top 10 baseball players. Top 10 pitchers. Right? And we started out with the Negro Leagues. They wouldn't even let us play in the same league as them. And when they let us in and they let Jackie Robinson in, we took that thing over. And then we handed the baton over to the Northern Tribes. And now the Northern Tribes is, is, is the, 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 the best of the best. Don't get no better than a Northern Tribe baseball player. Right? So it's our people that are the stronger ones. It's our people that are the, the best nation. It's our people. And Most High is making us beautiful in time. As, we be, as more and more of us wake up to the fact that we are Israelites and come to follow the Lord's statutes and commandments and keep faith in Yahweh Shai, look at what the Most High is doing across the world. In some eyes, people say, damn, it's getting worse and worse. No, for us, as Israelites, we look at it and say it's getting better and better because we know we one step closer to the day when we can return to the kingdom of the Most High. When the whole world will be rejoicing. Right. So these witty inventions and these inventions that that have come out uh, 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 throughout throughout history. A lot of those inventions. What were, were created by our people, because the most high gave us that wisdom and that understanding. Right. So you got here the southern and the northern tribes. Anybody uh, know. Of course, there's a lot of different ones on that side. And you got some of the names there. So anybody know who Frederick M. Jones is? That was the creator of the air condition. Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker created a lot of things. He built uh he built the 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 White House, right? He 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 set forth the plans to build the White House and as well as the rest of Washington, DC. Benjamin Banneker, he also created the first timepiece and the first working clock. He had has him down for the almanac. Granville T. Woods, the cutoff switch, an automatic cutoff switch. They used that in, throughout industrial, the, in the whole industrial revolution wouldn't have been able to, to function without a cutoff switch for all those uh, different big machines that, that are used, even still to this day. You, you, you have an automatic cutoff switch on just about anything. Your car got an automatic cutoff switch. Right. Your boiler got an automatic cutoff switch. 
So all these different inventions that you see, and then you see an automatic cutoff switch, that was one of our people, right? George Cook, the auto fishing device. So sometimes you'll see they got an automatic fishing device, um, a, a fishing rod that, that you don't have to reel back yourself. That was George Cook, right? A baby buggy, meaning a baby carriage. William H. Richardson, right? A biscuit cutter. Alexander P. Ashbourne, a blood plasma bag. So anybody that was in the hospital and you see the bag that they get, they keep your, your, your blood in and feed your blood back into you, if they take they taking blood from you and then feed it back into you and during a blood transfusion, the blood plasma bag created by Charles Drew. A chamber commode, a toilet. That's what a chamber commode is, right? Like one of those uh, portable bathrooms, a porta potty was originally created by Thomas Elkins, right? A clothes dryer. So anybody that goes to a, to, to, to the washing, uh, to the laundromat to wash your clothes, or let's say you have your, your dryer and your washing inside your house, the clothes dryer was created by George T. Sampson. So you dry your clothes because one of our people created it. A curtain rod, simple things, right? The curtain rod and the curtain rod support. Samuel R. Scropton and William S. Grant. So you're hanging curtains in your house? That's thanks to, to uh, Israelite. The doorknob. you in your house and you turn your door. And that's why I, I, I like this, uh, this picture. Because I was like, it was such simple things. I never knew that it was uh, a person who created, uh, one of our people who created the doorknob and the doorstop. Osborne Dorsey. Look at these things that our people created, man. Simple things that, again, people use every day still to this day. An egg beater. Will, Willie Johnson created an egg beater. So you beat your eggs. You got the, you got the thing. You put an egg. And it turns around and, 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 and scrambles your eggs. That was created by our people, too. An electric lamp bulb. Right? Louis Latimer. Let's go into the... We'll go into this, uh, right? Some of the African American inventors. Garrett Morgan. Anybody know what Garrett Morgan created? I'm gonna go down the list. It's about forty of them, so I'll probably go down like maybe another ten. See if we could if we could figure out. Anybody know what Garrett Morgan created? You can see the um, brother. Go ahead. What 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 he created? The um, the stoplight. Khan, all praises to the most high. And and was what was uh intricate about his was he created the three traffic. So the light, the same traffic light that we see now with the red, yellow, and the green, that was the traffic light that Garrick Morgan created. Because there was two different traffic things. There's one that was created with the just the red, um, which was created by somebody else. But the one that was that we see at basically every corner you go to and you drive in, um, throughout throughout your neighborhood, you see the traffic light. That was created by one of our brothers, man. Right? Good um good answer, Alma. What about Mary Van Britton Brown? Anybody know what that sister created? And that's the beauty of uh -huh. our people. Go ahead, somebody say Khan. No, I said la'a. Oh, la'a. Uh, that, that's the beauty of our people. Is that That's not just brothers. It's sisters, too. Our sisters are some, the smartest sisters on the face of the earth. Our sisters have the ability to create things that, that the white man couldn't even dream of creating because he he's still in, in his caveman mentality and just wants to, the white man want to create nuclear bombs. Oppenheimer. They, they gave that movie. The movie in which the white man showed you he created a nuclear bomb, they gave that all the awards. Because the white man still wants you to be scared of the fact that he's the one who creates these bombs. He's the one who creates death and destruction on this earth. While it's our people who bring forth light and brings, that's why the first invention, it just so happened to be Garrett Morgan. And what did he do? He created a light, a light that that keeps uh, civilization going. If, if there was no stoplights and stop signs, it would be accidents all over the place. But because of one of our brothers creating a light, there's order. In society. So now you know when to stop. You know when to go. Laws are based off of running a red light. Because of our brother. Garrett Morgan. Who created the light.
the stoplight. Right? So Mary, hold on. Mary Van Britton Brown. She created the home security system. Right? And there's a, there's tons of other things that she created, but um the home security system is uh is is key because how many of these these places from um uh ADT now of course technology has progressed since she created the original uh home security system but you got ADT you got um what's the orange ones Vivint security you got the ring doorbell you got all these different um um home security companies that profit off of the invention of our sister Mary Brown right here created the home security system that people still use to this day, right? And then, let's see, let's go into the next one. George Washington Carver. That's a simple one. I know, I know we got somebody out there. Who who knows what George Washington Carver invented? It's lucky. Go ahead. Um, um, of course, everybody knows the peanut, um, but really... Um, he formed the first assembly line also, like with, like with, um, how they manufacture cars and stuff like that. Um, uh, he showed white man basically uh, um, how to do things in productivity. God, the, the efficiency of the assembly line is still used to this day because he and and as the brother said, he showed white men again. We we're here showing the white man how to actually run his company. If there if there wasn't an assembly line, do you know Mount McDonald's couldn't function? Anybody that works in McDonald's understands that they take the the basic principles of an assembly line and use those same principles to build your Big Mac or to build your burger. The assembly line is used in 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 uh Subway. When you go to Subway, they start with the dude who cuts your bread, he puts your, your your turkey, he puts your cheese, then he passes it on to the next one, then the next one gets it at the the uh the the other the the what you call it, the register, and now he's asking you if you want cookies and a soda with uh and do you want to turn it into a, a, a meal. So everywhere from McDonald's to Subway, going into the industrial revolution, going into the uh the automobile industry the assembly line is still used until this day and when was when did we have an a, original assembly line we we use that on the slave plantations from the person picking the cotton then they they take it they put it in the bag then they got to hand the thing down and it get all the way to the other end and you go go showing master the, you know the white man how much cotton you was able to pick for the day or whatever the the commodity was that that we were picking on these farms and these plantations but george washington carver as well as uh inventing the peanut gin right but george washington carver he actually has a long list of uh inventions and patents right they say he also invented uh paints cosmetics and stains so um the, and, and he owns the patent for those, right? So there was a lot of different things that George Washington Carver invented. And you got to dig into it um, to understand cooking oil, axle grease, right? With 300 different uses for peanuts. So he, he invented peanut oil. He used the peanut oil to make grease for your car, uh, for the cars and for, for the different machines that, that, that were being used, Right. And so George Washington Carver actually was one of the the uh, the most profound inventors that we have in the tribe. He was, he was Judah, right? So um, you know, all praise to the Most High. And 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 he invented things that still to this day you can go to the store and find peanut oil. The different breakdowns of of how they even break down uh, different products into oil all comes from the genius of George Washington Carver, right? And let's see if they got anything else on there. I'm not going to go into every single to, to go into every single inventor and in depth into every single invention would take us, uh, you know, we'd be on on class for three days straight. And that's just dealing with Judah. But I want to get into uh, or just dealing with Judah, Levi and Benjamin. I want to get into some of the other uh, the other tribes as well. So we're going to keep going down. Let's see. Anybody know what Alexander Miles? We we'll go through another like five. Anybody know what Alexander Miles invented? 
if you do say Salakia. So Alexander Miles, right? Alexander Miles invented the elevator, right? He invented the elevator, right? Elevator doors. This was also because his daughter had fell. Um, the story, as the story goes, I think we'll go into it in one of the other slides. As the story goes, his daughter fell down like a shaft. And um, so he invented the automatic elevator doors, right? So the doors would be able to open and close. And um, that was something because of what happened to his daughter. How about Patricia Bath? Anybody know what Patricia Bath created and invented? Uh -uh. Slack, yeah. Go ahead, uh, uh, Bath and Body Works. <laughs> <laughs> God. All praises, all praises. It sounds like it just based on her name. Um, she was an ophthalmologist, an inventor, a humanitarian, and an early pioneer of laser cataract surgery. So for uh laser for your eyes, right? She 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 uh she she was the forerunner and the pioneer of cataract surgery. So anybody that has cataracts or ever had surgery on the eyes, it was Patricia Bath. She was a very, very intelligent. Uh, a woman that uh, was an ophthalmologist and an ophthalmologist is a doctor for the eyes for anybody that doesn't know. So if you go to an ophthalmologist, anybody who has glasses or anything, you have to go to an ophthalmologist to get your prescription. So she was an ophthalmologist who created uh, and a pioneer of laser cataract surgery, right? We wouldn't uh, have Lasix. We wouldn't have all of these different um, uh uh, ways of, of helping people to see better if it wasn't for Patricia Bath. And she actually recently passed away uh, during during COVID in 2019. Uh, her lifespan was from 1942 to 2019, right? So you got to understand, how it, it, this is something that uh, one of our women created, a way of doing surgery that the white man couldn't find out. That even our own our own brothers didn't 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 un know and understand the inner workings of the eye like Patricia Bath did, right? What about Mark Dean? Anybody know what Mark Dean created? Okay, let's check Mark Dean out, right? Mark Dean also was a doctor, right? And let's see. He holds three out of nine patents for the invention. And in 1955, uh, the first American IBM fellow, right? So his invention, let's see, I might have to click on his to go in depth on it, right? Mark Dean, let's find that. Vanica, there goes Patricia Bath, Mary Bound. Van Britton Brown, who we went into, George Carver, Mark Dean. As a child, Mark Dean excelled in math. In elementary school, he took he took advanced level math courses. And in high school, Dean even built his own computer, radio, and amplifier. Dean continued his interest and went on to obtain a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Tennessee, a master's degree in electrical engineering from Florida Atlantic University and a PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford. So this man was a genius, right? Built his own computer. And some of those parts to the computer, I'm pretty sure are used in different computers today. Radio and an amplifier, right? Salaki. Go ahead, King. Salaki. No, did, did it, um, Bill Gates steal his idea? Can he steal it? You said he's still built, he's still alive. I didn't hear what you said. The the, the phone didn't broke Bill up. Bill Gates still. Hold on. Oh. Now I said, didn't Bill Gates steal his idea? You know, Bill Gosh. Gates. Yeah, didn't Gosh. he steal his idea? From that was why it said he was one of the pioneers to IBM, right? Because Time. that that's what, what Bill Gates basically stole. The Microsoft Microsoft come. Um, uh, would you? I, I wouldn't say patent, uh, but but some of the um. 
some of the technology, I guess, that this man created. But it says he became the first African-American IBM fellow. So he he actually worked for IBM and helped to to further that the technology that we use, let's say, in a Microsoft or with Microsoft Windows and uh and with Bill Gates products. So yeah, you are correct. Bill Gates most likely did take the just like the the Edomites mm -hmm. always took our they, idea. Because they said he never created they said he never created anything. He didn't create no IBM software, nothing. But he has the patents. Right. It says here the IBM XT personal computer in 1983. So the IBM XT computer was built by Mark Dean and again Bill Gates. You know, probably in in some way nowadays maybe he paid for it. The um the the brother worked for IBM. He became an IBM fellow. So you know he he's probably on the team of of uh, of creators and inventors that led to what again to the technology that we use it now in a a Dell computer or you know, all these other computers that run off of the Microsoft operating system or, or Android operating system, as they call it nowadays. So I'm pretty sure, again, that this brother, you know, not uh, only super intelligent and super smart, which is why Bill Gates had to go to him. Bill Gates is, you know, people would think that Bill Gates is the one who created the, the IBM software that's being used in the in the computers or, or the hardware that's being used, but it's actually a brother by the name of Mark Dean, right? Good comment, brother, because I didn't I didn't realize that Bill Gates stole even in going through this. It don't is of course they're not gonna tell you that Bill Gates stole his uh, research from him, and and Bill Gates is utilizing that uh, the mind of one of our brothers to further turn himself into a, a even bigger billionaire, right? Um, Sarah Boone. Anybody know what Sarah Boone created? We're going to probably go down to, let me see. I'll go down to Mary Kenna. So we go from Sarah Boone to Mary Kenna, and then we're going to move on to the next tribe. or we'll move on to the next slide. Sarah Boone, anybody? You see how many is, is you know, out of the five that or ten that, that we about to go through, only a few, it was only two or three answers as to who some of these people were. We we don't realize how, again, civilization and society is running off of things that we've created, things of, of that our people have created when they just put their mind to it. And and when they do their studies and they 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 master and become a master builder, right? Sarah Boone says she co-invented the security system with Mary Van Britton Brown and the three light traffic signal. So she worked, um, she improved, made improvements on the ironing board, right? So you get your ironing board, making it easier to iron clothes. She also helped out with the, um, she created, it says, created a laser surgical device, a new version of the ironing board, right? And she's one of the first black women in U.S. history to receive a patent. And she, she says she co-invented the uh, the home security system with, with Mary Brown, who we read about earlier, as well as the three light traffic signal. Right. So our people was working together. They had sisters and brothers working together to create these things that, again, we still use to this day. What about Fred McKinley Jones? I got an uncle named McKinley. Uncle Mac. Anybody know what Fred McKinley Jones invented? Let's look. Right? Frederick McKinley Jones awarded 61 patents during his lifetime, including four for refrigeration equipment. So this man, this man helped to create your modern day refrigerator. Help create so that when if any of brothers are truck drivers and you got to drive around food, right? Anytime you see a truck on the highway transport and refrigerated or frozen food, you see in the work of Fredley McKinley Jones. So any of our brothers out there that's truck drivers and you moving food back and forth, right? The only reason you're able to even have that job is because of our brother Fredley McKinley Jones. Creating a system for mobile refrigeration. Right? All praises. This is an easy one. What about Madam C.J. Walker? Who knows what Madam C.J. Walker created and invented? Wow. 
nobody on Madam C.J. Walker? Come on, one of the sisters got to know about Madam C.J. Walker. So like, yeah. Go ahead, sis. She invented the hot comb. The hot comb and a bunch of other products that had to do with hair. Like, yeah. God, there we go. I was like, one of the sisters got to know, right? Madam C.J. Walker, one of the first millionaires uh, uh, here in America. One of the first uh, female Israelite millionaires here in America, right? She not only created the the products, but she also created the system to sell those products. She perfected, I, I would say, the system to sell those products, which was going door to door and going business to business. Right. Madam C.J. Walker would take her products from hair salon to hair salon, from door to door within our own neighborhoods and communities and sell her products so that they eventually were put on shelves. So she perfected a way of marketing. It's called direct marketing. She perfected direct marketing and door to door marketing, business to business marketing. Going out and canvassing the neighborhoods of our communities. And being able to bring these products to our people that would help. And, and now we using, you know, products and unless you specifically use products that are made by our people, a lot of people using, you know, products from other nations that are made by and sold by other nations. Usually you go to the store, it's a Chinese person store or an African person store that sells our beauty products to us. But it was actually Madam CJ Walker who perfected these uh, hair care products and sold these products to our people that actually helped our people in dealing with the type of woolly hair that we have. Because at, at the point when, when sh she was doing her work and doing her business, there weren't many products out on the market to help us deal with our woolly hair. So she came out with uh, everything from grease, a pomade to the hot comb, um, and and uh, plenty of other products that benefited our women as well as benefited uh, benefited our men, and established again a way of marketing that is used by everything from cable to solar to uh, to food companies to restaurants. Right, direct marketing is still very big. They still go door to door. Right, so says she had a hair loss situation, right? She was suffering from a hair loss and a scalp condition. She invented a, a innovative line of black hair care products in 1905 that led to her distinction as one of the uh, most famous uh, African-American inventors, right? She was America's first self-made millionaire, right? Before the white men was out here making millions, didn't even say she was the first Black female says she was the first female self-made millionaire. The white white women didn't even have jobs at this point in time. They couldn't even work. They was in the house. Then then couldn't take care of the house. Hiring us to take care of the house, take care of their babies still. Because remember, slavery had uh, one say it ended, but in eighteen eighty six. So you're talking twenty years basically after slavery. Twenty years after getting off the plantation. We had a, 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 a sister from the 12 tribes of Israel to become the first, America's first self-made millionaire because of the products that she invented for our women to take care of their hair. And then look at what our, you know, unfortunately, look at the, what our women do now with their hair, turning it blonde, uh, you know, putting all these different products in our hair that that don't don't help our hair out at all actually uh, cause us to lose our hair, which is one of the curses of the scripture, right? So you got to give it up to Madam C.J. Walker. She was innovative and she was, uh, and, and she also had a mind for business that helped her to keep her patents and help her to become a millionaire and help a lot of our people make money because she would hire our people to go and sell these products in within our community and within our neighborhoods, right? So all, all praise to the most high for Madam C.J. Walker, right? Definitely good answer, Armand. What about Lewis Howard Latimer? Nope. The carbon light bulb filament. So that little piece that you got inside the light bulb that actually lights up, that was Lewis Latimer. 
<sighs> right? That's that carbon light bulb filament. That little piece of the thing inside the light bulb that kind of like goes across, makes almost like a Y, and then it has a little thing going across in the middle. That's what uh, Lewis Latimer invented, right? Granville, I'm going to go a little faster. Granville Woods, right? It says Woods invented numerous contraptions for use in the railroad business, right? So the man, Granville Woods, is referred to as the Black Edison, right? Invented, it says numerous contraptions. I mean, basically, in order to get your uh, train go up and going, you needed Granville Woods products to have that train move, right, in the railroad uh, business. That's a lucky. Go ahead. He also had a brother, too, that he worked with. He worked with his brother. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but, yeah, he worked with his brother, and he had, like, um, a whole lot of inventions. And, um, and, and real quick, also, um, <clears throat> I was speaking of women. Um, it wasn't Colonel Sanders who invented the KFC chicken. Uh, um, he didn't do the recipe. Uh, I can't think of the black lady name, but it was her who did the recipe for that chicken. Tom, he took it from one of his slaves. Right or or one of his indentured servants, if that's what you want to call it. But it was a uh, it was a black woman who did invent the uh what they call it the 12, 12 herbs and spices, right? It, it was a black woman who created that fried chicken that everybody loved. Um, not not no Colonel Sanders. He took it and he he ran with it and turned it into what you now see as KFC. And our people still don't have those reparations. So when you see the the Most High say that we're gonna pay them back double that we're going to get a righteous recompense, right? And that the Most High is going to give us double what they stole from us, give us 10 times what they stole from us. Just like you see when we came out of Egypt, right? The Egyptians gave us their gold off their necks, their gold off their earrings, their, their uh, gold chains, their earrings. They gave us riches. Just like even you see with Abraham, when Abraham had come out, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then when Moses brought us out of Egypt, we always, these nations always come and they give us riches. Because in reality, they stole these things from us in the first place. These things wasn't theirs to begin with. Just like the brother just brought up a beautiful point of them stealing a simple chicken recipe and then taking that chicken recipe and running with it. Just like they did with uh, Madam C.J. Walker. They saw the the uh, the ability to make money off of us and then they took it and these other nations, they run with it and they push our inventors, they push our uh, uh, creators, they push our people to the back burner so we don't know that it was our people who created these uh, products that we might need, these products that we can use, our people who right now today create... Uh, it's a brand called, I believe, Shea Moisture, right? It's created by uh, uh, Blacks. That's a, a hair brand, a soap brand that you can find. It. And, and it's created by our people. But you don't see these, these uh, big commercials for it. You don't see all these big um, advertisements for it because they don't want us to know the things. You got to do your research and to find it out if it was something that was created by our people and how to help uh, promote it and how to how to use it and so on and so forth, because they don't want us to know, right? And so, yes, Granville Woods, the telegraph, the, the railway railway devices, a semiconductor, right? Um, these are all different things that was created by uh, Granville Woods, right? It says, Benjamin Bradley created the steam engine for warships. George Alcorn, the, the, the semiconductor and aerospace emendator, and then Granville T. Woods, the, the telegraph and railway devices. I didn't mean to hit that. Right? And these are things that, that you can go over with your family, with your children. These are things you can look into for yourself so that you know and you can call out some of these different things. Right? Elijah McCoy. Right? Elijah McCoy, who invented the automatic lubrication devices for steam engines right in order for that steam engine to go in order for that railroad to work 
They needed Elijah McCoy's invention, right? Henry Blair. Right? Henry Blair created a seed planting machine. Right? It says Henry Blair invented seed and cotton planters to enhance farming efficiency. A lot of times you'll see that. A lot of the inventions from the peanut gin to the cotton planting machine, these were inventions. So it was like the, the we, we must have came out of slavery like, oh, no, you're not going to put us back in slavery. We can find it. We, we can make a machine do all the work for us. And did our people, you know what I'm saying, get the credit for it? Did our people get the, the riches off of it? No. So when we go out and we say the Edomites are still living off the backs of our people, it's because we have beautiful inventions and creations that have come from our people that the world benefits off of, but yet we still don't get credit. They give us the shortest month of the year. It's more, it, it, this list right here has 40 something inventors and we have way more than that, but this list has 40 something inventors. That's more than the days in the month. You could even do two inventors a day in February if you wanted to see all the things that our people created. And then when we add on the Native American, Seminole Indian, Hispanic man, right? Mary Kenna, right? Let's see, Mary Kenna. Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenna invented the sanitary belt, patented in 1957 and revolutionized menstrual hygiene. So she created the menstrual belt or a sanitary belt. She created the tampon. I don't know if anybody knew that for all the sisters out there. If you or maxi pad, I guess is what it's called. I'm I, you know, I don't I don't know. But she created the pad basically for women's menstrual cycle. I was created by a sister by the name of Mary Kenna. Right? We go we're gonna go down two more. We're going to do Lonnie and Valerie, and then we're going to move to the next slide. Right? Lonnie Johnson. The engineer developed a mega water gun in his free time while working at NASA. Right? He created the so-called super soaker. So when you go out and you're having a water gun fight, it's thanks to Lonnie Johnson. And the man was smart because he worked for NASA. Right? Man invented the super soaker water gun. Right? And then we got Valerie Thomas, African American scientist and inventor who worked for NASA. She is known for inventing the illusion transmitter. It's a 3D optical illusion device. Right? That's used by NASA. Right? And if we were to go into it, We'll see that what she invented is still being used by NASA till this day. Right? She's still alive, I believe. Right? So you got Valerie Thomas. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Elder. Y'all by Shem Yosha Barak Bam. Yeah, by Shem Yosha Barak Right? So that's, uh, that's Valerie Thomas. Right, a, a data scientist and inventor, she invented the illusion transmitter for which she received a patent in 1980. She was responsible for developing the digital media formats that image processing system used in the early years of NASA's Landstat program. Right, so NASA wouldn't have been able to focus if it wasn't for literally focus because she made a, a, a imaging, a 3D imaging uh, projector that was used by NASA in its early years, right? And she was from Maryland. Still alive, 81 years old as of today, right? So we're going to go out of this one now. Let's go back. Let's see what the next one holds. Famous Hispanics, inventors, and their inventions. Can anybody tell me before we go through, go down and look at the list, anybody tell me, Name something that you know one of our Hispanic brothers from the Northern tribe invented. 
this is where the whole lesson got interested for me because I said to myself, I couldn't tell myself off the top of my head before doing this lesson what one of our Hispanic brothers from the Northern tribe have invented. Can anybody name me one invention that was invented by one of our Hispanic brothers from the 12 tribes? Like a Jeopardy question, man. Right? So let's look Let's look at some of these things. Pedro Flores was the first person to manufacture the yo-yo. Everybody knows about the yo-yo. Everybody used the yo-yo. That was invented by the Northern tribe. Pedro Flores. Ellen Akoa invented optical analysis systems and also was the world's first Hispanic astronaut. So while we had, again, you see it was a sister working at NASA, right? And we all seen that movie with Taraji P. Henson and, and how the three sisters, um, I forgot the name of the movie, but was the one that had Taraji P. Henson when she worked, uh, was playing the role of the sister working at NASA. Now we see that one of the first, the world's first Hispanic astronaut invented the optical analysis system for NASA, right? So like hidden figures. Right. Hidden figures. There you go, Khan, right? So NASA is not running without a set of sisters and some sisters uh, from, from the northern and the southern tribe. It's not going down without us. Right? Luis Frederico was awarded the Nobel Prize for his discovery of sugar nucleotides and their role in the biosynthesis of carbohydrates. So that's a scientist right there. Right? Carlos Finlay became famous for his work in identifying the mosquito as a carrier of the deadly yellow fever germ. Northern tribe scientists, Northern tribe geniuses. Santiago Ramon y Cajal was a famous Hispanic inventor who was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work on the structure of the nervous system. Intelligent genius. Doctor Miguel Servant's work in anatomy and uh, physiology led him to the discovery of the circulation of blood throughout the human body. If it wasn't for, for Miguel Servant's work, we wouldn't know how the blood flows through the human body. That was a Northern tribe brother who, who figured that out. Luis Maramontes was a chemist who co-invented the contraceptive pill in 1951. Uh, man, you know, unfortunately, a Northern tribe created the birth control pill. But again, that's something that, you know, sisters nowadays, they, they use, could be given the birth control pill, not to, to take away from their baby, but to help regulate their monthly cycle, different things like that. But, um, you know, that's, that's one of the bad inventions, let's say that, 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 that we probably shouldn't have came up with. I'm pretty sure that the, um, the, the the white man is it's a so-called white man the Edomite is happy that we came up with the birth control pill because he's still trying to control our population right Guer Gu Guillermo <laughs> Gonzalez Camarena invented an early color television so right now when you turn on your your TV understand that it was because of a, a, a northern tribe brother named Guillermo that you can actually watch TV in color unless you still be watching TV in black and white. Because the color TV was invented by a so-called Hispanic man from the 12 tribes of Israel. Felipe Vadillo was a Mexican, so he's from the tribe, this man is from the tribe of Issachar, inventor who patented a method of predicting premature fetal membrane rupturing in pregnant women. Right. So a couple of a couple of these inventors. So it was a it was a, a from the tribe of Issachar. Felipe Vadillo. Juan Lozano invented the rocket belt due to his obsession with jetpacks. Right. So you can keep going on. Those are just a few. Right. We're going to go into some more of the northern tribe inventors throughout the rest of the lesson. Let's see what this one brings up. 17 of the greatest Hispanic inventors that dramatically transformed the world. People we don't know about. The Hispanics are among the most widely dispersed 
and diverse ethnicities in the world. How do we know that they're one of the most widely dispersed? Because the Most High said that we would be scattered throughout the twelve, uh, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. That's how another way you could say, you know, Hispanics are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribe sign is correct. Because even here it will tell you that they're part of the most widely dispersed and diverse ethnicities in the world, along with our people, because they are our people. Hispanic inventors have made considerable contributions to science and technology throughout the ages. And here's a few of them. Right? I think we just mentioned we went through a few of them. But this will actually show, um, I think this goes into some of their, yeah, this goes into their pictures, right? So it, it'll show Guillermo Gonzalez. That's the man who created the color TV transmission system. Northern tribe brother. His nationality, Mexican. So thanks to the tribe of Issachar, we got a color TV, right? passed away in 1965. He was an electrical engineer by trade. Right? Keep going down to the next one. Right? Louis Von Ahn. For the captions, anybody that goes online and when they ask you uh, to, you know, if you're really a, a human being, can you show, um, can you type in this letters or whatever, right? The, the capture boxes on computers. That was another Spanish man. Right? Guatemala. Right? What's Guatemala? A uh, tribe of what? Naftali or a tribe of Asher? Right? From Guatemala. I'm not looking at the 12 tribe site right now. Right? But he invented captures. Right? Juan Palmas invented the stent. I don't know what the stent is, but he's from Argentina. Right? In order to keep heart arteries open, after an angioplasty, Palmas created a balloon expandable stent in collaboration with physician Richard Scats. The Palmas Scats stent was given a patent, and Johnson and Johnson, a healthcare provider, provided funding, and the U.S. FDA approved it. Right. So when people are having heart surgery, in order to keep their uh, their arteries held open, he created that device that would help. To, in, in, in order to have successful surgery, right? Alberto Vincio Baez co-invented the X-ray reflection microscope, right? That's this brother right here, nationality Mexican-American, right? So another brother from the tribe of Issachar, the X-ray reflection microscope created in 1948. Right? Our Northern tribe brothers and, and sisters as well. This is the, the, the brother, uh, the, the Mexican brother who invented the birth control pill. Right? This one was a good one to me. Arturo Arias Suarez invention helps detect earthquakes. And we know Christ said it would be earthquakes in various places. So we wouldn't even be able to detect all of these earthquakes that are happening. And right now you got earthquakes happening all across the world at a high clip, right? You have in some cases, you're having three, four, five earthquakes in a day in, in, in various places across the entire earth. And how do we track those earthquakes? How do we detect those earthquakes? Because of the invention by Arturo Suarez from Chile, right? Brother probably would be tribe of Zebulun. Right. So we got the tribe of Zebulun. We got the tribe of Asher. We got the tribe of Issachar. Right. Santo Leota invented an artificial heart from Argentina. So the artificial heart, anybody that, that has a, a, a a heart monitor, heart transplant, all these different things. If you have an artificial heart, is because of this brother here, Domingo Santo Leota. Says he was born to Italian immigrants, right? So this could this this actually could be a. He he might not actually be an Israelite, but they claiming that he's Argentinian, right? But you never know, right? You got this sister here, Ellen Nicoa, 
right? She was an astronaut. That was the first astronaut, Mexican-American, right? First Hispanic woman astronaut participating in NASA. This, this uh, Claudio Castillo, right, developed and improved the baby incubator. So anybody that's had a baby, like my, my daughter had to, to uh, go into an incubator for, for her first month because she, she was early term. Right was created by a Peruvian, another Northern tribe brother. So you got all these people from the Northern tribe. Victor Okoa invented an early form of electrical brake. So um, uh, Issachar invented the brakes, electric streetcar brakes. Right? All of these different things invented by the Northern tribes, as well as what we looked in into the Southern tribes. Right, it says Spanish, so that that's why I didn't focus on that one. The beauty blender was invented, and a lot of sisters probably know about this beauty blender. As I guess something where you put in makeup on, you use this to to blend the different colors of your makeup in. Invented by Raya and Silva, Mexican American, right? Tribe of Isakov. right? Manuel Rodriguez Garcia it says Spanish there, but we don't know if he's an Israelite. So from the Spain or Madrid, right? You can't just go by their name. You got to go into it and see, right? Um, Jose Hernandez Rabola, Mexican, from the tribe of Issachar. He invented a device that converts American sign language hand gestures into spoken and written words, right? So anybody who's hard of hearing, that does sign language, he created a device that will help them to, to, to be able to communicate with, with people who don't necessarily speak uh, sign language, right? The submarine, Isaac Perel Caballero, invented an early electrical submarine, right? It says Spanish again, so we don't know if this guy is, is from Spain or if he's one of our people. But if anything, he probably stole most of the stuff from our people if he's not an Israelite, because that's what they do. Right? But that's that's speculation right there. Right? So you see the 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 northern tribe as well has these these beautiful abilities to be able to uh create, right? And there's one more, I think this is is this Hispanic inventions again. Yeah, this just shows some of the pictures, right? The capture, artificial heart, color TV. Right? Blaring scope, the stent, the earthquake sensing technology. Right? So that just gives you some of the pictures to show you some of the things that they created. And it's beautiful when you look at it and you see. Right? And we even dominate in sports and entertainment. We dominate the landscape. If you could get Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13, uh, when you got a chance, Barbara Kashaw. Right. We dominate these okay. different landscapes. We dominate the landscape of invention and creativity. We dominate the, the, the landscape of sports and entertainment. And it's because this is what the most high says about us. Read it when you got it, Cap. Con. It's the book of Matthew, chapter five, verse 13. When everyone have it, say con. Matthew, chapter five, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is Khan. thenceforth good for nothing. Khan, it's good for nothing. We are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, what is a, the flavor? The flavor is the, 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 the keeping of the laws, statutes, and commandments. Because when we lose our flavor, that means we are doing wicked things. That means we're going after pagan customs. We're following after Easter. We're following after Christmas. We're following after these pagan customs and holidays. We're following after the wicked ways of Esau and the wicked ways of the world. That's how we lose our flavor. We are the salt of the earth. We bring flavor to this whole earth. We bring flavor to this whole world. We make these uh, these things. We make the color TVs. We make the traffic lights. We make all of these. We just went through uh, 20, 20 to, to 30 different inventions, if not more. And we're going to go through a few more. But we went through about 20 to 30 inventions in combination of the northern and the southern tribes that show you the world would not be able to operate without us being the salt of the earth. 
And when we lose our flavor, that means that we no longer committing, we, we no longer committed to keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. And so we lose our flavor and we good for nothing. That's why we don't get the credit for these inventions. That's why we don't get the credit for being the best. Because instead of us keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and giving the glory and the honor to the most high, we are, have lost our flavor. We lost our soul. We begin to do wickedly. And then the enemy comes and takes credit. The enemy comes and says that he's better than us. That we're ignorant and we can't read and write. We went from being told we were ignorant and can't read and write to within 20 years, a female becoming America's first female millionaire. Imagine how many white women was jealous of Madison C.J. Walker in the early 1900s. You know how many white slave owners was jealous of George Washington Carver? How many white architects and builders was jealous of, of uh, Benjamin Banneker? Just like nowadays, we got 50, 60 rappers and the world goes crazy for Eminem. You got people saying Eminem, a white rapper, is the best rapper ever. And I'm not taking away from his talent. Eminem, Quran, each each nation is going to have their heroes. Each nation is going to have their they strong and mighty men. But we the best out of all of them. Whatever they could do, we could do better. Which is why these other nations have a hatred for us, because we are the salt of the earth. If they could dance, we could do their dance and we come up with a better dance. If they could sing, we could sing and come up with a better song. They got Adele. They got Dolly Parton. And then look what uh, Beyonce just did. And, and Beyonce, you know, she, she caught up in her stuff, caught up in her wickedness or whatever. But even in caught up in her wickedness, look at what she just did with that country album. Got Dolly Parton and all these other people mad. She even trying to do country and take over their lane because that's what they get. They get upset when we step into their lane, when Beyonce steps into country, when Tiger Woods steps on the golf course, when Serena Williams and Venus Williams, Arthur Ashe, when they uh, uh, Sloan Stevens, when they step on the tennis court. Right. Gabby Douglas. When 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 and and uh and what's the new sister's name um in the Olympics the the other sister the the short sister I forgot her name um that just won all of the 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 gold medals in in uh, gym, gymnastics they get upset when we when we step onto things that they say they have down pack that they are I think the best her name is Bynum sorry so like right. All praises to the Most High. How you doing, Sister Nava? Shalom, shalom, yet holding on. Shalom, shalom, all praises. Right? The white man gets upset. Because remember, as we started, we two different people. We are the salt of the earth. But what happens when we lose our salt? What happens when we stop keeping the commandments? We good for nothing, is what the scriptures say. Right? Get Isaiah 43 and verse 10, Barbara Kishaw. Uh, That's it's important for us to keep the commandments. Because when we keep the commandments, as we, we still got our flavor. And that's why you see the, 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 the different flavor that each of the Israelite elders have in their teaching. Right? The different flavor that Elder Torah brings, the different flavor that, that Priest Abak brings. Right? You see the different flavors within the camps. When they when uh, let's say if they put up uh, videos on the Passover, you'll see the different flavors within the camps, right? And you see the the if if you notice, we're trend setting throughout the world right now. Rappers want to be Israelites, entertainers want to be Israelites, sports figures want to be Israelites, and what they're learning is that it's not something that you could become. You are an Israelite. That's what, because they're learning that they are the salt of, you can't become the salt of the earth. Esau can't become the salt of the earth. Esau can't become an Israelite. There's no such thing as a spiritual Israelite. You're either an Israelite or you're not. And if you're an Israelite that is, spirit, that is in the spirit, you're going to be an Israelite that's keeping the commandment. Walking by the spirit. And those Israelites that walk by the spirit, those are the sons of God. 
meaning those Israelites that keep the commandments and faith in Yahweh Shai, those are the sons of the Most High God. Read that when you got it, Cap. Isaiah 43 and 10, Baba Kishore. Con. And don't forget uh, Clarissa Shields, the, the sister that's car basically she took got all the belts in boxing. Con. That's a sister. Con, you got Clarissa Shields, right? From it went from Layla Ali, Muhammad Ali's uh daughter, to now you got Cl Clarissa Shields. And she, like Cap says, she got all the championships in boxing. She's even fighting in, in mixed martial arts and tearing up people in mixed martial arts. Right? Her last fight that she fought, she beat the hell out of some white girl. It's fun to watch Clarissa Shields fight. She went a little too far when she started saying she could beat up a brother. But I'm pretty sure there are some brothers that she can beat up. But, you know, she 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 started, she went a little too too overboard when, when she said she could beat up a, a brother. Because I, I don't think she would beat my man Thurman, um, who is an Israelite as well. But, um... You know, she probably the, the average Negro walking down the street. She probably could, you know, she probably could take them, especially in her weight class and under. But um, but yeah, these these white people going crazy. You got this white boy now, Jake Paul, thinking he's gonna step in the ring with Mike Tyson, even though Tyson's fifty something years old. Tyson gonna put a whooping on that man. I seen a video the other day where Tyson was saying his daughter was trying to teach him uh what. Uh, uh, about the Israelites saying that Christ said that that we we are the sons of God, and Tyson said, Nah. He told his daughter, Nah. That that, that there's, there's no way that that's written in the Bible. And his daughter flipped through the scriptures, went went to Psalm eighty two, and showed him that it says we are the sons of God, and that if we don't keep the Lord's statutes and commandments, that we would fall and die like regular uh, uh like regular men. And then she showed him where Christ reemphasized that in 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 uh in in the Second Testament, in the New Testament. Going back to saying we are the salt to the earth, we are the gods on this earth. We are made in the image of the Most Watch High. The, uh, Go ahead, you saw uh, a video. You saw a video where Christ, where, where um, Tyson's daughter was teaching them the truth. God. Oh, really? Con, Ty, Ty, it, it was Tyson, and he was explaining that his daughter was teaching him that that we are the gods. We are, that the Bible says, and that Christ says that we are gods on the earth. And Tyson was saying he didn't he didn't believe it. He was like, Nah. He told his daughter, you know, I don't believe it. You lying. You got to show it to me. So he was like, she started flipping through the Bible, flipping through it, and then she found Psalm eighty two and found it in uh in the in the New Testament where Christ said we are gods on the earth. And he was like, he had to fall back and. And was like, yo, that that joint is true. Doing that and the five percent, because a lot of the five percenters do that. Oh, she's talking about Israel, because the five percenters try to prove their point by saying that. But that's interesting. But Tyson, you know, we told Tyson way, way back. We saw Tyson on 42nd Street, the eldest. They told Tyson way, way back. And he was with Mickey Rooney and the uh, not Mickey, the white boy, Kevin Rooney and them guys. And what he did with us, he, he he kissed the white man. He kissed the white man in front of us. You know what I mean? So Mike, well, Mike have been trying, we've been trying to tell Mike, Mike's been hard-headed. Mike's been disrespectful. You know, another time there was a club way back in the days called Bentley's. Mike Tyson was in there and the elders was in there. And Mike Tyson looked at the elders and called them Batman and Robin. You see what I'm saying? Um, and the club, like Mike Tyson, yeah, he's been disrespectful, but hopefully the most I wake him up, but that's why he went through all that hell. Because we, we tried to tell him many times. Con, con. And, and, and again, that's, that's exactly what the scriptures say. We are the salt to the earth, but what we good for nothing. If we lose our salt, Mike lost the salt. And what happened when Mike lost the salt? He went into trying to become a Muslim, went into uh, all these different other ways of, of thinking and, and these different doctrines. And he lost the belt. He, he lost he lost a lot, you know, throughout 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 that time. Like you said, Mike, Mike went down. You know what I'm saying? And now I don't know exactly what what he subscribes to. But that, that was a, again, I didn't bring up the video for the class um, when I go into the entertainment side of, of everything. On a, on a future lesson, I'll, I'll bring that up and I'll find it and I'll send it to you. 
um, so you could check it out. But, you know, Mike, Mike, we know most of these celebrities have heard the truth, especially, you know, during the late 80s and the 90s and early 2000s. But way before the pandemic, before, you know, before uh, 2011, um, from from probably like 80, uh, 82, I would go all the way until 2012. We know there were bus celebrities downtown. They was walking around. They was, you know, you could you could touch them. They was right there. So we know plenty of celebrities. I'm a, I know you always tell the story about when 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 you saw Big Pun out there, and and Pun was acting disrespectful toward the Israelites. So, um, Cool G Rap is an Israelite right now. So we we know that you know Fat Joe and Big Pun. We know a lot of these different celebrities. They 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 hear about and they know the truth. It it just so right now happens to be that is popular to say that you're an Israelite, like Kanye West, like Kyrie Irving, like Fantasia Barino, like uh, uh, DC Young Fly, um, Horace Grant. You got all these different um, uh, celebrities from different walks of of the entertainment, the sports, uh, the 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 music industry, um, proclaiming to be Israelites now. Oh, and- God. God, uh- you hear me out? Go ahead, Elder. Yeah, yeah, big. You went out if you were still talking, Elder. Can you hear me? No, nah, go ahead. It just, you cut off. I don't know. And now you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, big pun. You know, he. we told him, you know what I mean? He, when we was teaching, he came out of the limousine. Big Pun came out of the limousine purposely to take the crowd away from us. When he came out of the limousine, all the crowd came over to him. And we told him about that wickedness. And then he stuck his middle finger up at me. And I told him, Most I gonna kill you, brother. Most I gonna kill you. I don't rejoice over that because I wish the brother didn't die. He, because we don't want no Israelites to die, but he that wickedness he did, I told I told him, you know, brothers know that. And all, you know, you, you know the results, what happened with him. You know what I mean? As opposed to LL Cool J, who stayed in the limousine and he said, no disrespect, I don't want to come out. Because I know if I come out, the crowd is going to come to me. And I don't want to take the crowd away from you. That's what LL said. And we gave LL a flyer, you see. But Pun wanted to be disrespectful. So, you know, Pun never cared about the Bible because he said he wiped his behind with the Bible pages. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But a lot of celebrities also dealt with Fredro. Um, Fredro from Onyx. He was disrespectful. You know, I really, the brothers really wanted to beat him down when I told the brothers not fall back. I didn't tell, the brothers were just waiting. Back then, we had like a very, a crew that was very anxious. They, they, they Basically, they loved to put beat downs on cats. <laughs> and um, yeah, that crew back then. And he's telling them, I told the brothers, nah, I just gave him a pass. He was disrespectful, but I gave him a pass. My brothers definitely wanted to beat him down. Fredro, um, another brother, who else? Damon Dash. Spoke to Damon Dash uh, about the Bible. He was like, that's the Bible. He didn't really believe. He was like, it's written by. You know, the white man, so to so. Uh, P. Diddy, we didn't, uh, the, the elders talked to P. Diddy, you know what I mean, back in the days, and, and P. Diddy, <laughs> P. Diddy, you know, <laughs> P. Diddy got upset, and then brothers called him a punk, and then he, he kind of, <laughs> you know, wanted, acting like he wanted to fight, but his bodyguards was holding him back. You know, so all these chaos won, came to the camp, Chaos One, um, Chaos One wanted to build with us, but at that time he was real hot. So a lot of times, so the people, the people can't, you know, a woman, woman was just going bugged out, like wilding out on Chaos One. So he really couldn't stay. He wanted to build, but that was when Chaos One, you know, was was Chaos One, and he, you know, he broke out. I talked to Raekwon. Me and Raekwon had a conversation. Raekwon was cool. RZA, you know, RZA came to the Passover. So, yeah, a lot of these celebrities, man, a lot of these celebrities. 
um, Keith Murray. Keith Murray stayed for a while at the camp. Uh, a lot of these celebrities are how these celebrities heard, man, especially in New York, because 42nd is the main attraction. So the brothers kind of, the elders kind of went at Eric B. and Rakim, kind of disrespect them, you know what I mean, um, Eric B. and Rakim. So, yeah, it's, it's countless celebrities. Um, Prince used to come by the camp. Bill Cosby used to come by the camp. Paul well, Mooney definitely was a regular at the camp. Oak Hogan came down one time at the camp and brothers <laughs> challenged him to a fight. And he said, we had a couple of big brothers and they actually went at Hogan and challenged him. He was kind of nervous. Hogan was nervous. <laughs> That's it. Serious. So it's just, it's, I can go on and on about how many people came to the camp, man. But they heard the word. Ah. Khan, Elder, and one of the most recent, one of the more recent ones was DMX when he went down uh down with Shower Park down in Atlanta. And um and within, you know, they uh, said he, he was starting to actually entertain uh the truth and you know started started to look at it in a different way. And next thing you know, he ended up dead. They told me he OD'd in a in a damn parking lot somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So these yeah. celebrities know, and, and the celebrities that do, the closer they come to declaring that they're an Israelite, to proclaiming that they're an Israelite, and even in some cases, we don't know what they're doing in their personal life, but in some cases, trying to keep a form of the law, statutes, and commandments, they get threatened with death, or they get they get their riches taken away from them. We see Nick Cannon, he got his money taken away from got fired from a show um and and got taken off a while and out for a certain amount of time before they finally let him back up but what did nick cannon have to do nick cannon had to go and apologize to the white man to his face he had to go uh bring amalek on his show and and apologize to 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 one of these fake jews so that um so that he can get his uh spotlight back right kanye uh kanye west they still trying to make it seem like he's crazy because he declared that he's an Israelite, right? And and that he's a Jew and that we are Jews, right? So, you know, it's it's, it's, it's a lot of the celeb like like the elders, a lot of these celebrities have come into contact with our elders way before there was even an internet. They, they was out in Manhattan partying and they saw the big crowds that was surrounding our elders learning, surrounding our elders scoffing, surrounding our elders just to, to get a flyer to be to 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 hear the, the scriptures taught and 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 being given out in a in a specific and a certain way that the most high had given to the elders to bring it out real and uncut. And they never heard the scriptures taught like that before. So they would surround our elders. In all these different boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, so on and so forth, the Bronx. And next thing you know, they had they 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 were given a choice. So you don't see this them them stepping up and saying, "Oh, we Israelites." Don't think Kanye West is the first rapper to ever hear about it or or or, or to deal with it. No, like Elder was saying, he done dealt with these rappers from Onyx to to Big Pun. We saw on camera DMX hop out to deal with our our uh, uh, brothers down in, in Atlanta, Charlotte Park, dealing with them. Uh, we we saw, um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but Cat Williams, he hopped out and he went and dealt with, I believe it was GMS, and uh, he put a, a gave GMS a big a big donation. So these celebrities know. It was they, Zakari, yeah, Zakari. <laughs> It was Sakari, okay. Um, I gave him ten thousand dollars. Right, you know what I'm saying. So uh, I I didn't realize it was Sakari Salakia on that. I couldn't tell um by the video who it was, but you could you could see Cat Williams hopped out and he gave him ten G. Right, you got uh Sakari who who has a few celebrity members, um so, and entertainers that that are are members of their organization. Right. So these celebrities, they know. They know who we are. And the bigger important thing is, is that a lot of them are actually afraid to step out and say that they're Israelites because they don't want to lose their money. But the bottom line is that we are the soul to the earth. And this message and this truth is going to continue out to go out to all four corners of the earth so that the most highest prophecy and word will be fulfilled. 
And one of the reasons why we have that talent and that ability to be able to create and invent and that ability to excel and be the best at all of these different uh, uh, in all these different formats and in all these different ways is because we are the salt of the earth. Read that when you got a chance. Cap Isaiah 43 and 10. Probably good job. Come on. Isaiah 43 and 10. Come on. Come on. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, save Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed neither shall there be after me. Ah, right. And that's what we go out and we teach. We teach people that we are the chosen people of the most high. We are the most high's true servants. We are the true followers of Yahweh Shai. We are his true servants and we are the chosen people of the most high. We are Israelites, right? And we try to get people to understand that the most high God's name is Yahweh, right? And then he's the one true and living God, the most high God. Is not going to be no other most high God after him. And there was no other most high God before him. Christ is a God and we are gods. Christ is a God and the Israelites are God. But there's only one most high God. There's only one ancient of days. There's only one Lord of hosts. And that's Yahweh, the heavenly father, who we give all the glory, honor, and praise to. And that's the understanding that we come to teach all people who Yahweh is, who Yahweh Shai are, is, and who the Israelites are. And once we give them that understanding, we teach them who they are according to the scriptures and what their judgment is for what they've done to the children of Israel. But repentance has been given to Israel. The promises have been given to Israel. The covenants have been given to Israel. That's why we are the salt of the earth. That's why we are the chosen. That's why it says, and my servant whom I have chosen. The Most High is saying we are his servants and we are the ones that he have chosen, the ones that he've called, the ones he made a covenant with, the ones he gave the promises to. We are the ones that are the salt of the earth, right? You could drop that and get Matthew 5 and 16. Go back to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Right. So it's, it's the Israelites, which is why we have this creative mind, which is why we have these talents. So you got to continue to grow in your creativity, continue to grow in your talent, continue to grow in your studies of the scriptures. Ask the most high. If you have a talent in sewing. If you have a talent in uh, making music, if you have a talent in teaching, ask the most high to help you grow, help you get better, help you perfect the craft, help you to be perfect as the heavenly father is perfect. Right? Read that for him, King. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine. It's lucky. Let your light so shine before men that ye may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Ah, let the light shine. The light that the Most High put in you, let it shine. Let people see that you are happy to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. It's not, it's not a grievous thing to keep the law. Let people know that you are Israelite. Let people see you in your fringes, in your zizits, in your head wraps. Let, let the sisters, let, let people see you dressing modestly. And how happy it makes you to dress modestly. How happy it makes you to celebrate the feast days and gather together with your, with, 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 with your brothers and your sisters, the rest of the chosen people of the Most High, our people, the Israelites. Let people see how, how, how much of a joy it brings to you to go out to camp and to, to find one brother, one sister to help and to teach and to bring back to their, their heritage that's been stolen from that, that's been lost over the course of the years of history. Let people see that joy that it brings you. That's what it means when it's let your light so shine, right? Because other men and other women is going to see this light shining from you. They're going to see you keeping the commandments. They're going to see that it's a joyous thing 
right? Even the Most High uh, told us, it said in the scriptures, it said, it, when, when, even when bad things happen to you, let it be a joy to you so that you could show others that even when things is not going the right way, you still find joy in it. That's why it says, it says, count it all joy, everything, the good and the bad and the ugly. That's how we show that we the salt to the earth. Because no matter what's going on, we still working and doing our best to keep the law, statutes, and commandments and keep faith in our shot. We still able to help uplift our, our brother and our sister. We've able to find joy no matter what's actually happening and going on and not be downtrodden and down and out. And even when we are down and feel like we down and out, we got a brother or a sister to help lift us up and help build us up. Right? So let your light shine so before men that everyone will see and that they will see your good works. What are the good works? The good works are us gathering together, keeping the Lord, lifting each other up, loving our brother, loving our sister, not hating on each other, not hating each other. And then they would glorify our heavenly father. Right? And that's what we have to do. The next verse says, it, it talks about the law, right? Christ is saying, he don't think he came to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets, but he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. And that's what we have to do. We have to teach the law and we have to teach that the most high is fulfilling his prophecy. And that's why you see these celebrities and these entertainers gravitating and coming into the truth. Because nobody made them to understand history so well. They look back at what their history, they learn the history. Excuse me. They can look back at what they learned in the history class and say, nobody ever taught me history this good. I'm learning true history from the Israelites. That's why you have all these scoffers. These Kemetic scoffers, these Christian apologist scoffers, these uh, uh, atheist scoffers. You have all these people coming at us from all these different angles, challenging what? That we say we're Israelites? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? All, all we're doing is saying we're Israelites and we want our people to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And that the Most High is going to bring judgment on the nations that enslaved, raped, robbed, and murdered and tried to destroy the Israelites, his chosen people. That's all I'll be saying. And then we might get specific with a, spe a certain nation, a certain religion. But then we're able to show through history, archaeology, through factual evidence that will support the claim that we're making. So we're actually able to break it down in multiple ways and show the support and evidence to the truth that we are speaking. So what's the big deal? You got tons of people out there that they could be going at, that they could be going after, but yet they choose to try and come for our head. They try to come at our elders and our teachers and they get back down each and every single time to the point where all they could do is curse and scream. And make a fool of themselves. And try and make a mockery. When you go into the scriptures, you, you'll see that they, they mock the prophets. They mock Yahawashai. So if they mock the prophets and they mock Yahawashai, if they call Yahawashai Beelzebub, what more are they going to call us and talk and try and mock us? But that's why the scriptures say, will a man mock God? Right? So let's go into some of the sports. This is just going to be a list of some sports that um, list of African-American sports first. So some of the things that we did first in sports, right? So it says achievements by African-Americans in various fields historically marked uh, footholds often lead into a more widespread cultural change. So it's our people, Judah first. Judah comes in first. As you can see with the inventions, Judah started making these inventions in the 1700s and the 1800s. Next along came Issachar, along came uh, uh, 
Zebulun, along came Asher. So Judah always makes the mark and, and changes and sets the tone first. Right? They call it breaking the color barrier. So it said, well, some of uh, the world of sports generally invoked in a frequently cited example, Jackie Robinson. The, of We all know Jackie Robinson. He actually lived on my block in Brooklyn. Well, I lived on his block in Brooklyn um, over on Beverly and Flatbush. Right? 52nd and Beverly. He had the house in between uh, 53rd and 52nd on Beverly. Right? So you got the 19th century. The Negro, the 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 uh, Society for American Baseball Research, because we were the best at baseball. For years, we were the best at baseball. This is in 1879, right? The Negro League, first African-American to play Major League Baseball, right? And he played as a substitute in one professional baseball game for the Providence Grays of the National League. And then years... Uh, Later, you get Jackie Robinson, right? So you got some of these here. U.S. Open Golf Championship, John Shippen. First American golf professional. From John Shippen to Tiger Woods. The first American to win a gold medal at, at uh, in, in track, in cycling. Major Taylor. Right, he was the first African American to achieve a world championship in any sport. Then you move on to the 1900s, the 20th century. First African American pro basketball player was Harry Lou, from Harry Lou to 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 Lou Alcinda to to Shaquille O'Neal, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson, right? First ba African-American professional basketball player. First African-American professional football player, Charles Follis. First African-American boxing championship, Joe Gans, a lightweight, right? And, and the list goes on. First African-American heavyweight boxing champion, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson had a thing for, for Edomite, but Jack Johnson. Play with. And we're too busy worrying about did he do it. Right? Somebody got to put the phone on mute. Right? So yeah, you keep. Come on, come on, Shalaki. Jack Johnson, man. Jack Johnson was a character, man. White God. boys holding him, man. He, he, used to be, <laughs> he used to beat them white boys up, man. And they said he used to, he used to be whispering in their ears as he beating them up that, you know, I'm going to go after I go. 10, 15, or 20 rounds with you. I'm going to go 20 rounds with the white woman. And she's going <laughs> to love it. And white boys used to get mad as hell, man. Tattoo <laughs> Jack Johnson was a character. <laughs> Ali, Ali got a lot of his talking from him. Because that's what he used to do. Like you see Ali standing the ropes, and they start pounding the body. Jack Johnson used to do the same thing. And a boxer would wear himself out. He would talk. He would talk in their ears and talk all type of stuff to them, get them mad, and then they would wear themselves out. The same thing you see Ali did with um George Foreman. You know, he was a real character. Jack Johnson. He um, you know, they stopped him at the light. He was he was speeding at the light, and they stopped him at the light, and I think it was like fifty dollars or something. But he gave the cops like a hundred dollars, and the cops said. Why are you giving me a hundred dollars? It's fifty dollars, and he said, "The same way you see me going, in the same way my, I'm coming back. So I'm gonna pay you a hundred. <laughs> God, <laughs> he's a character, man. That was a real character, Jack Johnson. God, and he was nothing to play with, like you said in the ring. He was beat. He would beat the white boy up and tell him he was gonna go deal with a white woman after that. And like you said, the white man was crazy. They hated Jack Johnson. They they before, before he and he, and he was the first ever heavyweight champion, and he held that belt for a while and he held it down because he he was he was beating the, he was he was beating the pulp out of Edomites. Right, moving on. Right. You got uh, right. and I think that fights a lot here. I think mm -hmm. that fight was fixed because if you look at him, you see him laying down there, then he gets back up. 
But I think he I think he fixed that fight. They couldn't really beat him. They had nothing. Jack Johnson was a beast, man. I mean, and these guys used to go there. It wasn't no 10 rounders. These guys would go like 20 rounds. God. Beast, man. God. Yeah, he, he he was not in the play with it, that ring right there. You know, a lot of people don't know about Jack Johnson, but if they're not boxing fans, but that 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 Jack Johnson was was he 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 was definitely you know he definitely backed up the 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 stuff he was talking. He backed it up with action. He got in that ring and he he would go hard, 15, 20 rounds, no problem. And they was using gloves that wasn't as cushioned as the gloves. Like now they use uh eight, 10, 16 ounce gloves. They the leather gloves that they was using back then barely had any pattern or cushion. It was like I think four ounce gloves. Um with, with meaning that they had a way less cushion than the gloves that you see boxers using nowadays. They was um probably probably if anything similar to what they what you see in UFC. Um I think UFC is like four so, um but yeah, they you know he 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 wasn't playing no game. And you got the first African American NFL football coach, Fritz Pollard. He was a co head coach, and he also played running back at the same time. How many people out there, you know, are are able to coach and play at the same time? Magic Johnson did that. He uh, coached and played at the same time, or at least tried to. You know what I'm saying? But how many of uh of people in, in from other nations are you seeing able to do that? You know what I'm saying? They keep going down. First African American sports cast of 1929, from 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 uh Sherman Jocko Malt Maxwell to Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp. You know what I'm saying? Come on, oh, nah. so like y'all went on Jackie Robinson. He was more of a sellout. He criticized Malcolm, criticized Malcolm, um, and was you know Jackie Robinson. They actually used him. There was a lot of better players in the Negro League than Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella. There was different guys. It was Josh Gibson. But they said they wasn't going to come over there because they they said they felt no need for them to be abused like that. They could just stay in the Negro League. But Jackie Johnson came over because he took, you know, the abuse. Right. He called a nigga and spit on and all of that. So really, Branch Ritchie – the one that brought Jackie Robinson over, if you really look at it, the Brooklyn Dodgers was actually low attendance at the time. And when Jackie Robinson came over, it had a lot of attendance. And the reason why, you had people that, that liked them, and then you had people that hate them. You had people that wasn't even into baseball, but they just came to spit on them, call them a nigga, and so on, and disrespected them. Just like Jack Johnson fights. So that made the attendance a lot. So they, the stadium started to be full, and who got the money? Branch Ritchie. So, you know, when you look at that whole Jack Jack Robinson thing, we analyze that, too, about how the Brooklyn Dodgers had low attendance, and they needed that. The Negro came in, and he filled up the stadium based on people wanting to see him fail, and then you got people that wanted to see him win, and all of those people packed up the stadium. So he was actually used by the white man. Ah, that, and that goes back to the days of the Roman gladiators. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days of the Roman Coliseum, we were the actual gladiators. We were the Spartacuses uh, that they talk about when they talk about Spartacus. And so we talked about that the other day at camp. We we were actually the, the gladiators in the Roman Coliseums that they were using to bring in these crowds and to fill up the Coliseum and to keep these uh, Romans happy and to keep these Romans at bay from from uh, from overrunning society and overrunning the rule of the Roman Senate. They would bring us into these big arenas, bring us into the, the Roman Coliseum, have us fight against lions, have us fight against each other, have us reenact uh, battles and so on and so forth. And then have us do one on one fights the same way boxing, wrestling uh, and every other sport that you see played in these coliseums and these arenas and, and in these centers that they play them in now from the Barclays Center to the Capital One Arena to uh to 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 Madison Square Garden, um to Nassau Coliseum, so on and so forth. It was us who, like the elder just said, they would bring in to fill up their seat. They would bring us in to make their money, 
right? So in certain, right. they would take us just to make money off of us. The same thing they did with our inventors is the same thing they did with our sports players. They would steal the inventions from us and then profit off of our inventions, get the patent off of our inventions. Right. So you don't see that's why you don't see that generational wealth coming from the early, the, the, the mid to late 1800s all the way up until today. Because why? The patents were stolen by the white man and then they would take it like we looked at the, the brother brought up earlier about IBM and, and Bill Gates taking uh, the, the brother's invention for, for the IBM XT and using it to, to, to push forth Microsoft and to push forth his company. And to further uh, exploit our talents and exploit our uh, intelligence. Not only did they exploit our intelligence and, and our ability that we receive from the most high through wisdom and knowledge to create and make inventions, they exploited our, our physical talents and our physical abilities from the days of the Roman Colosseum to the days of slavery here in America, all the way up until today where they still doing the same thing with uh if you watch the the games last night where it where I, I know that I know these two white chicks wasn't able to beat these talented uh, uh sisters the talented sisters that I don't know what happened when they came out at halftime and how they 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 did that to the LSU sisters and next thing you know this white girl Kate and Clarkson is the greatest college basketball player ever but they taken away from uh, uh, Reggie Miller's sister, Cheryl Miller. They taken away from uh, Swoops. They taken away from uh, uh, Lisa Leslie. They taken away from what's the sister that played in Connecticut, um, Maya Moore. She can't be the greatest ever, but they giving it to her already. Why? Because she beat a bunch of sisters. And then you got Juju came coming coming up in the uh, Juju Watkins came up in the game after her, and the white girl who who the white girls actually those, those two white girls actually could ball. I'm not gonna say that they're not talented, but are they better than us? No, but they had to put it on TV and make it into the biggest thing in the world. The biggest game uh, in in March Madness right now was to showcase white versus black. They put it right in front of your eyes, and then you know. Most high, most high will. They, 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 they end up losing in the championship to um to Tamika Ketchens and those sisters in South Carolina. But they trying to show that they better than us in basketball, that they got better females than we do in basketball, right? So you keep going down. You got the modern era, as a uh, elder was saying, Jackie Robinson and the Brooklyn Dodgers. You got Moses Fleetwood Walker. He was the first baseball player in 1884. Just didn't get credit for it. First African-American Major League Baseball player in the American League. Brooklyn Dodgers was the National League, for anybody that knows baseball. You got Larry Doby, the Cleveland Indians, right? First African-American consensus college All-American, Don Barksdale. Right, keep going down. I'll just I'll just scroll through because it goes well, it, it keeps going. Right. And yeah. you know what y'all was up, Salaki is still debatable from what Spike Lee said. If if um what's the name? What's the name? Babe Root was an actual Negro, but did not want to, you know, back then did not want to classify himself because of the what Negro was known or the, you know, the thing that was going on with the Negro. Uh, there's actual debate about that, Babe Ruth, you know, because when you look at his nose, you know what I mean, uh, very Negroish nose, not like a white man's nose, but, you know, he didn't want to bring that out. But secretly, they say black people used to go there and cheer for him. They secretly knew that he had some Negro that he was actually, from what Babe, from what Spike Lee said, you can look to Spike Lee story, and he was actually a Negro didn't want to be identified as a Negro. So they say. God, God. And, and ba but you, you, would, you would think because they've only had, I mean, the Edomites outside of Babe Ruth, you know, they have one other uh, or maybe two, two to three maybe home run champions, Mickey Mantle, 
um, who also played for for the Yankees, and then they had the dude. What was the dude's name who played for Cleveland? Uh, Mark McGuire. You know what I'm saying? But we we've had plenty more. We had Reggie Jackson. We had Sammy Sosa who went and bleached his skin. I'm not sure why Sam the brother Sammy Sosa went and did that, but we had Sammy Sosa, um, Barry Bonds most recently. Um, so over the course of history, we've always had the best home run hitters. Even um um Pete Alonso for the Mets, you know what I'm saying? One of the, the the most recent um home run champions in the home run derby. Um, who plays for the Mets? You know what I'm saying. He he's a Northern Tribe brother. So Northern Tribe, if, if we took over baseball, they they didn't think that that was gonna happen when they let Jackie Robinson in. When they let Jackie Robinson in, you're right, Elder. There was a lot of us who wanted to stay in the Negro leagues and have our own league, but they ended up taking the 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 richer owners, the owners that have more money from the the um the major league. Uh, baseball and major league association they ended up taking and buying out the negro leagues and bringing all of the negro league stars onto uh into major league baseball because they saw how much money that they can make off of our backs so by as we're looking at here by the 60s and 70s you would see now, Jackie Robinson was inducted into the Hall of the Baseball Hall of Fame by 1962, the first African American to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. But we had plenty of players that was better, and you know, like I said, I, I wouldn't doubt uh, what Spike Lee is saying that Babe Ruth uh, uh, could could have been an Israelite, right? And and if we would, if our people throughout one of the reasons why we're going through all these different times, if during these times our people would have been keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, we would have been even more salty. We would have had even more flavor. But you look at all of these different times, through the, the Jack Johnson time, we got blues music, right? Jazz music. By the 60s, we got funk music, R&B music, James Brown, uh, uh, Parliament Funkadilla, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right? So it's both sides, you see all these things happening in the sports world. In and in, in the sixties, you saw our uh, our women uh, that that was stepping up. The the women who was a part of Nassau, right? Hidden fix that movie that that's in the sixties. So you see all of our people starting to uh, it, it's uh, like little by little, the Most High was awakening us. Showing us that the, the, the hidden talents that we have hidden inside of us, buried inside of us, because we lost our savor for not keeping the commandments. But little by little, the Most High would give us these inventors. He would give us these creators. He would give us these, these uh, 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 mighty men, these sportsmen, these virtuous women, intelligent, strong, right? that would come and that would do all these different type of things that would change the world and change the game. Right? So you see Bill Russell, 1975, Bob Douglas, Clarence Gaines. These are the African-Americans inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Right? These are all people who changed the game literally. Right, first African American to win a NASCAR Grand National event, and just this week we just had another African American win at NASCAR. Wendell Scott. That that was the that 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 was in 2015, or not in 2015. That was uh in the 60s. It's saying C also 2015 because that's when I believe the second one had done it, and we had we just had another one out of the top out of the three that have won NASCAR Grand National events. Right, Bob Gibson, as the elder mentioned earlier, World mm -hmm. Series MVP, played for the Cardinals. Right, you got Bill Russell, nineteen sixty six. Right, I'm gonna just scroll through. The first team of five African American starters to win the NCAA basketball tournament was in 65 66, the Texas Western Miners basketball team. That's why yesterday's game with the women was so big. If you look, it was five white women versus uh, four, uh, five white starters or, or four white starters versus four black starters. I think the other team had one black person, and LSU had one white person. 
When you look at USC, they had a Spanish sister. They had three, uh, three black sisters. And I think one white person. And then on the other side, it was the same side, same with UConn. But UConn has always had a little bit of a diverse team going back to um, going back to their years where they was just wiping everybody out, in, at least on the women's side, right? But you keep going. You keep going. You got Arthur Ashe, right? Arthur Ashe, he was a little off, you know what I'm saying? But he was still one of the best. Althea Gibson, Serena Williams, some of the best tennis players that have ever lived. First quarterback start in the NFL, African American, Marlon Briscoe. Right? To Doug Williams, the first African American quarterback to win a Super Bowl. To now you got uh uh Russell Wilson, you got uh what's the what's my man's name who just won it? Um for the Kansas City Chiefs. Right? So you see that? You see all these different people. You got Willis Reed, the New York Knicks. First player to win the NBA, NBA All-Star MVP. And the list just goes on and on and on. It's like in Mahomes. Kaha. Right? Mahomie. That's, that's what I like to call him, Mahomie. He he, he, they saying he's going to be better than Tom Brady. They mad at that right now. So they try to push other people to, to make it look like they're better than Mahomes. But they're not. Mahomes got three championships in like uh, six or seven years, five years or something like that. Right? And like I said, we just keep going down the list. First African-American to play in the NHL, Val James in 1981. They, they don't want us to take over these other sports, the ten, uh, uh, ice hockey and all of this other stuff. Doug Williams, like we just mentioned, first player to, uh, African-American to win the Super Bowl. Right? And then we just keep, you can keep, like I said, going down the list. 21st century, right? Olympic gold medal winner in the bobsledding team. Vanetta Flowers in the two-woman bobsled. Right? And this is not, this is only mentioned so-called African-Americans. This ain't even going into Benjamin and uh, Levi and the things that they've done. The inventors were, but this is more so going into just America, so-called African-Americans from the tribe of Judah. So you see all these things that Judah done did. You know what I'm saying? Going, oh, Gabby Douglas, Simone Biles, just like uh, uh, a sister Nava brought out earlier, Right? We taking over the gym in all different ways, right? Wendell Scott, that was 2015, inducted into the Nassau Hall of Fame, right? And you just keep going down and you see all of these different talented brothers and sisters that we have. It goes all the way up until 2022, right? General managers and how to put teams together, right? People don't know baseball was actually invented by the Northern tribe. They used to play stickball. Stickball was one of the many early sports played by American indigenous people in the early 1700s. So we actually invented baseball. They just took changed the bat. Like we all played stickball in the hood growing up, especially in New York. Stickball was something that we all played in Philly, New York, and the inner cities. We all play stickball. Stickball comes from the Northern tribe. That blew my mind when I read that. I was like, nah, you can't be. You got to be kidding me. But it was actually the Northern Tribe who invented stickball as well as invented a form of basketball that we'll get into in a minute, right? Everybody knows Ty Bo. Billy Banks is famous for inventing Ty Bo, a fitness program that combines martial arts, boxing, and aerobics. Ty Bo is a combination of the words for Taekwondo, a Japanese martial art, and a form of boxing, right? Horace Gracie made MMA famous. That's a Brazilian. Right? So you, you look at all these people that are in the, the world of MMA, John's Bone Jones. These are our people. Who's the uh, my other man? Uh, God, I forget his name. The, the ball head dude, that, the Brazilian ball head dude. That was nice Um, in MMA. Anyway, I forgot his name. Right? John Bone Jones is the man right now. Carissa Shields is is the top 
uh, female to quote right now, right? So whether it's fighting, whether it's baseball, it's our people who invent these things. Now you get the tribe of Reuben and Gad, right? No, our our brothers from the tribe of Reuben and Gad invented kayaks. If you ever go swimming and you use goggles, that was invented by the tribes of Reuben and Gad. A hammock, a syringe, baby bottles. How many people on the call knew that Gad and Reuben invented baby bottles? Wow. Lacrosse, right? Let's look at some of them. 10 native, and this is on the History uh, Channel website, right? This is the History Channel website. It's official. 10 Native American inventions commonly used today, from kayaks to contraceptives to pain relievers, Native Americans developed key innovations long before Columbus reached the Americas. Right. So you see the man right there, Native American man with a big dang on canoe on his back, man, about to go into the water. And, 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 and so that's how, you know, we knew how to get from one side of the world to the next. We invented the canoe. Corn. It may be a crop. With no fees or minimums and no okay. overdraft. It may be a crop. Banking but with Capital One is the carefully easiest cultivated decision by in the history of decisions. <laughs> Even easier than this. Corn was cul carefully cultivated by ancient farmers as long as 10,000 years ago. Native Americans then taught. We, we taught European colonists how to grow the crop. And look at what Bill Gates is doing now. Speaking of Bill Gates early, he's going around buying all the farmland across America. It was Native Americans who taught Europeans how to grow corn. Farmers in northern Guatemala and southern Mexico selectively bred teos... Synth teosin as wild grass for many generations to enlarge the ear and develop kernels that were soft enough for humans to eat. Once they created the corn plant, their invention spread throughout the Western Hemisphere. We literally created corn. People would not, you wouldn't be able to eat 70% of the food that you eat. If you go look at about 70% of the food that you eat, it had some sort of corn meal or corn product in it. And it was our people who created corn, the northern tribe from, from uh, northern Guatemala to southern Mexico. So you're looking probably at the tribes of Zebulun and the tribes of Issachar coming together. Rubber. You wouldn't have rubber tires. Uh, what else is made out of rubber? You wouldn't, you wouldn't have rubber bands. Um, uh, paws, but rubber balls, no ditty. You wouldn't have any of those type of things if it wasn't for our our brothers from the and sisters from the tribe of Reuben and Gad. Native American inventions were appropriated by the Europeans who had the trading networks and manufacturing infrastructure to commercialize them. So that's exactly what they did with our inventions and products. They would take them, they would put them into their manufacturing infrastructure, like the assembly line by George Washington Carver, like uh, different products that uh, from the peanut gin, the cotton gin, they would take them and then they would commercialize them just like they did with our physical attributes. They would take us, they would manufacture us on these breeding farms to be the biggest and the strongest, right? And then they would commercialize us by selling us, by marketing us and marketing our abilities. They did the same thing with food. They did the same thing with, with corn. They did the same thing with rubber. It says here, for example, rubber was a material developed by the Native Americans, and then Columbus took a rubber ball back to Europe. So Columbus took the rubber ball, which we used to use as a basketball or which we used to use to play stickball with, and he took it back to Europe, and then they, 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 they uh, reverse engineered it, right? says Charles Goodyear developed the vulcanization process. That's where you get Goodyear tires from in the 1830s to allow rubber to withstand heat and cold. Colonizers developed bath rubber tree plantations in Asia to produce the raw material for factories. Now rubber is used all over the world. And it was our brothers and sisters who created rubber, a product you, they're not paying the Northern tribe 
uh, or giving the Northern tribe a patent and making sure that the Northern tribes are paid for a product that's used all around the world on every single car, on every single bicycle throughout the entire world, in between the coating, in between your refrigerator to help your refrigerator stay locked and keep everything fresh. That's rubber. Right? Here goes the canoes. Right? Snow goggles. Northern tribe had snow goggles because when they lived up in the mountains, because the northern tribe was living all over. If you could see there, look, they had a, a big giant ship. When you look on the middle, they had the canoes, they had big ships, it, and, and, and this is them giving it over because uh uh to and trading these things with the people on ships. And then, like they said, Columbus taking the things and bringing them over to the other side of the world. Invented goggles fashioned from wood, bone, antler, or leather to protect their eyes from overexposure to the sunlight reflected from expanses of the snow. They put a slit in there to simulate the way you can, that you can squint. Right? They basically made snow goggles, sunglasses. It was us who created sunglasses. That's why we look so cool when we put sunglasses and snow goggles on. Had a whole era in hip hop where you had to be where it was cool to wear snow goggles, right? Cable suspension bridges, those bridges that you see in the movies, right? Where uh, King Kong and all these different movies, where you see them going across. It was us who created a bridge to get from one side to the next. I don't know how we did that, but we created cable suspension bridges. Right, The Inca of South America figured out how to weave mountain grasses and other vegetation into cables, sometimes as thick as a person's body, and then used them to build super strong suspension bridges that spanned across gorges. Some of the structures spanned longer distances than anything, longer distances than anything European engineers of that time could construct with stone. So we were able to build bridges like this better than any other European of that time and better bridges than they could even build with stone. Though modern steel suspension bridges, which basically, if you look at a modern steel suspension bridge, is mo modeled after the bridges that we came to create. They're modeled in the same way eventually achieved a far greater scale. The, and we just saw a, a steel suspension bridge uh, get blown to smithereens and, and, and get destroyed by a barge ship uh, crashing into it. The last one of the ancient Inca-style grass cable suspension bridges still spans a gorge in Peru's Canas province, right? The raised bed. That's how you know Esau was sleeping on the floor. It was our people who taught them to raise up a bed. But this is a raised bed for agriculture. This is like if you uh, if you know how to do any farming or if you do any growing. This is our people who basically figured out how to go into a lake, uh, go into fresh water and make a, a, a make it so that we can grow crops in fresh water. Right. That's what a raised bed is. So you can go in your backyard and you could do a raised bed as well. Raise, you know, uh, um put where you want to plant your, your your vegetables, where you want to plant your fruits and just raise it off of the ground. So you you give it um give it a little bit more room to grow and a, a little bit more room for the roots to flourish. But we were doing this and and we created this here so that we can grow massive amounts of crops. Right? Natives in South and Central America invented the technique of enriching soil and piling it to build raised garden plots called chimpans, chinapas, on swampy land in the lakes, according to Emery Dean Keoki and K. Marie Portfield in the Encyclopedia of American Indian Contributions to the World. The technique was a forerunner of raised bed farming used for modern vegetable production, right? So to mass produce vegetables, mass produce fruits, we came up with the way that that was able to be done. The Northern tribe figured that out. Baby bottles, the Iroquois took dried and greased bear gut and added a nipple fashioned from a bird's quill to create bottles that could be used to feed infants, according to the Iroquois historian. 
right? And we knew how to work off of the land, anesthetics and topical pain, pain relievers, right? Let me close that picture. Anesthetics and topical pain relievers, syringes, hammocks, oral contraceptives, right? Mouthwash. It was us who created mouthwash. Various tribes in Northeastern and North America used the wildflower gold thread as mouthwash and as a treatment for oral pain. Right? So we got to give props to our Northern tribe brothers and sisters, man. Right? Going in here. So you just see, again, those are some of the pictures. The kayaks, the goggles, syringes, the hammocks, lacrosse, right? Suppositories. All these different things, the glasses, those are the, the, the glasses down at the bottom of the last picture, chewing gum, mouth mouthwash pain relievers, raised garden in beds, all of these things created by the Northern tribe, Native American invention, right? Go to the Native American recreational activities, right? So that's why I got the picture of that. Importance of tribal games. The games, playing games was important to the, the tribe, right? We settled disputes that may have otherwise led to war by playing stickball with each other, by playing basketball with each other, by playing lacrosse with each other. Instead of killing each other, we, we, we figured we play stickball, we play lacrosse with each other. Right? Chutney, archery, gambling, right? We was throwing bones, canoe racing, right? And then you, there was a big role. I'll just skip down to this one. Some indigenous games were intended for all men players. However, women still contributed to the recreation and entertainment culture of native tribes. So it was our, uh, uh, our tribes who allowed women to even play in sports. Way before the white man allowed the white woman to come play baseball because the, the white man was away at war, our tribes would allow the women to compete in certain things, such as races, competitive races, juggling, Choctaw, stickball, double ball games, and basketball, because we created basketball. Not Naismith, the white man. Women were offered the ones to carve out the spears and the arrowheads that would be used for archery contests. Archery is something that you see in the Olympics, right? So Native American women participated in and helped and bring about Native games. And it says foot races were held primarily for men. Indian women will hold their own races to organize them in the valleys. Right? So you see all these different things, man. Our women was involved in it as well. We were the ones who allowed our women to be, to be involved in these things. Not the white man. The white man, he, he, for years, he 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 knew his woman wasn't talented and couldn't do nothing. They were forced into making that movie. Uh, uh, if you ever watched that movie, A League of Your Own, that was because the white man was no longer here, and they didn't want all of us to take over baseball. So they allowed the white women to play baseball, and eventually allowed a, a couple of black women to play baseball, and saw how good we was at it. Right. Um, that was the last one, right? Um, get Genesis 49, Barbara Kishaw. I didn't put what scripture I wanted there. Let's see what I want. If you're still there, Cap, Genesis chapter 49. Um, think what I want. This is the blessing that Abraham or excuse me, that Jacob gave to his sons, right? And he told them what was going to happen and, and befall them in the last days, right? So we could just read, um, you could start off from verse one, Cap, and we probably read it up to, and it goes all the way down. You still there, Cap? All oh, praises, Cap. Khan, shalom, shalom, brother Brian. Right? All praise to the most high. So in Genesis 49, it's just gonna go through the the what's gonna happen to the Israelites in the last days, and it goes through some of the things where it says uh in verse eight, Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies, 
and your father's children shall bow down to you. Right. So that's, of course, going into Yahweh Shai. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Yahweh Shai's hand being on the neck of his enemies. But that goes throughout our history. Right. David's hand was on the neck of his enemies. Right. King David. Right. Uh, and Judah, you are, are he whom your brothers will praise. Right. So David, be, King David being from the tribe of Judah, King Solomon, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, being from the tribe of Judah, the, 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 the 12 tribes of Israel, they gave praise to David. Right. When he came and David has killed his 10,000. Right. And, and Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the Holy Lamb of God, worthy is the Lamb to be praised. Right. So Judah's going to receive praise. So that's why you see, again, Judah being that first one to uh, step into the sports world, to step into the world of 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 uh, of, of technology and and uh, making these different inventions they, that, that we will receive praise for our talents, praise for our inventions, right? We go down to um, where is the next one? Um, Zebulun. Zebulun shall dwell by the haven of the sea, and he shall become a haven for ships, and his borders shall adjoin Sudan. So you see Zebulun create uh, uh, a Native American creating the kayaks, creating the boats, creating the ships. Right, you see Zebulun dwelling along the coast. That's when you read Genesis forty-nine, it actually is an explanation of the twelve tribe sign, and it shows you and explains to you what is where the twelve tribes are going to be residing, which is why Zebulun dwells right off the sea, right in in uh in middle and in South America, Middle America and South America, Central America and South America. Right, it goes into about God. Gad is a troop that shall tramp upon him, but he shall triumph at last, right? Bread from ashes shall be rich, and he shall yield royal dainties, right? All of these different descriptions that Jacob given to his sons is so that we here in the last days, most high willing, we would be able to understand that we are his chosen people when we read these things and we see the blessings that we would be able to have. And, and, and when we see the talents that we would be able to carry over. Right. Uh, you see lacrosse right here. Right. Some of these inventions are still utilized to this day. I think this is just another um, five Native American inventions that are still used in the modern world. That's going to go through, of course, the kayak. We just looked at that. Um, snow goggles. We just looked at that. Right. That's just, it just had a better picture. So that, that was the original so-called Native man using the snow goggles. Of course, they took the worst person they could to take a picture of. Um lacrosse right people still using lacrosse are playing lacrosse hammocks still being the suspension bridge right going into all the different inventions and showing those are still things that we use to this day um the book of genesis chapter 30 and verse 11 right this is another um this is when, when we were being born Right in verse thirty and um, verse or chapter thirty and verse eleven, right? That was by this car game, ladies. By this car game, by about two or three car games. The main reason why right. phone on mute, or at least turn the TV down in the background. Then Leah said, "A troop comes." So she called his name Gad, right? And we just read the blessing that Gad was given um, from Jacob. Right, he was he he was reiterating again what what Leah had said to her son, right? So we go to Numbers chapter thirty two, and verse thirty four, right? Um, verse thirty four. So verse thirty four. Con. Con. Yeah, I got kicked out, but I'm back. <laughs> I saw a good cat. Con. This is Numbers chapter thirty two and verse thirty four. And the children of Gad built Deban and Athoth in Arar. And the right. trough. Um, no, you good there. Is that that's just a verse showing you that we built cities, right? The children of Gad built cities. They built the city of Debon, Adarah, Arua, right? And if you go on even to the next verse, um, verse 36, Cap. Yeah. Um Beth Nimra and Beth Haran, fence cities and folds for sheep. Ah, right. These are the cities that the children of Reuben built. 
right? So Gad and Ruben was building cities going all the way back to numbers when we started to, to, to make our way into the land, right? Ruben was building foals for sheep and we was building cities. So if we was building cities, what makes you think that we, we, we didn't come up and bring that knowledge over here to, to North, Central, and South America. That's how we got these big cities that was built over here. That's how we dwelt and, and, and we were a troop. We was a mighty strong army over here. Right? Um, get 32 and 25. Jump back a little bit. Baba Kishore. Verse 25. And the children of Gad and Reuben and the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commanded. Right. So you got Gad and you got Reuben saying that they was going to do as the Most High commanded. That's why I remember Cap brought out a lesson that showed that they found uh, uh, archaeology over here in America that showcase that the tribes of Reuben and Gad were keeping the commandments over here. I think Glenn Beck on, on Fox News had brought it out and Cap showed the video to us in a lesson, right? So you see here, you see Gad and Reuben together. So in the book of Numbers, Gad and Reuben is living together. They live in side by side. Gad and Reuben is building cities side by side together. And then what happens? Gad and Reuben comes over to America and they live side by side and they build stuff together. So the, the most I've been telling us in the scriptures that God and Reuben was going to be together, that God and Reuben was going to be able to build up together. And that's what we see happening right here. Said so the children of Gad and the children of Reuben, they both went up to Moses and they was like, look, we're going to follow everything you tell us to do. We're going to keep the commandment. And then it shows later on in the verse that they was able to build cities, multiple cities, right? Gad built one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, about seven different cities, right? Eight cities, fortified cities. So these were fortified cities. These wasn't no just uh, like how they try to show us just little tents here, a tent here, a tent there. No, these were fortified cities. Well, a fortified city means it has a wall of protection around it. So that it had protection around it from invaders. So Gad and Reuben built cities together. Right, the children of Reuben built Heshbon and El Elat and Kajarathan, Nebo, Baal Menion. Right, these names have changed over the course of history, but it was uh, Reuben and Gad, and these were the cities in which they built. And it just so happens if you jump down to verse thirty-nine, and the children of Micah, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it and, and disposed of it. So now you got Gad. Reuben and Manasseh. And when you look at a modern day map, you'll see Gad, Reuben, Manasseh, Cuba, right next to them, right in the middle of the ocean. The most high been putting us in the same areas together, right? Let's get Judges 5 and 18, Cap. I'm going to try and fly through these scriptures and get through oh. the last of the, of the scriptures because I know it's getting late. It's the book of Judges, chapter 5. Judges chapter 5, verse 18. Uh, Zebulon and Natali were a people that jeopard their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. Khan, so now you got Zebulon and Naphtali right next to each other, right? They jeopardized their lives. This is actually talking about Zebulon and Naphtali doing something bad. They was worshiping gods they shouldn't have worship, right? And they went out to the to to the uh, jeopardize their lives. It says to the point of death, going out on the heights of the battlefield. But it shows Zebulon and Naphtali being right next to each other, being together. Right. This is in when we're fighting for the land of the Philistines. Right here, we're trying to fight and take over the the, the land. And it says Zebulon and Naphtali went out there and jeopardized their lives to the point of death. They fought to the point of death to take over the Gaza Strip, Ashkelon and Ashdod all the way up to Joppa. Zebulon and Naphtali was fighting together. So again, you see Zebulon and Naphtali, and when you look at the 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 uh, the chart, Zebulon and Naphtali is right above each other in Central and South America, right next to each other again, right? Um, go to Ezekiel 48, 1 through 12. Okay. 
This is Ezekiel chapter 48 and verse 1. Now, these are the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Heflon. As one goeth to Hamath, has a Renan in the borders of Damascus northward. To the coast of Hamath, these are his sides, east and west, a portion for Dan. And by the border of and by the border of Dan, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Asher. And by the border of Asher, from the east side even unto the west side, a portion for Nadali. And right. by the border of Nadali. You got Dan, we don't know. Dan is spread about, right? Because Dan ended up becoming so few in number. They got mixed in with the other tribes. So we don't have an exact place to where the remnant of Dan is. But you see Asher and Naphtali, again, when you look at the, the 12 tribe sign, Asher and Naphtali are in South America in the in a place there and they're bordering each other, right? Um, when the land is being divided, right? So if you look at, if you was to look at a map, you would see that uh, Asher and Naphtali, their land bordered each other. Here in the Americas, Asher and Naphtali's land borders each other, right? Read on. Verse four, and by the border of Naphtali, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Manessa. And by the border of Manessa, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Ephraim. A portion for Manessa and Ephraim. So what happens when you come to the Americas? Who's right next to each other? Puerto Rico and Cuba. Who has basically a, the same exact flag minus uh, uh, one has a, the, the blue, one has the red uh, surrounding the star? Ephraim and Manessa. Right. So you got the, the scriptures is once again showing you we went from Genesis, we went to numbers. Now we all the way here in Ezekiel and it's showing you Asher, Naphtali right next to each other, Manasseh and Ephraim right next to each other. They bought their towns border each other. Right. Because the most high's word can't come back void. It's not going to change. So what did the most high do when he brought us here to the Americas? He kept the same tribes together with each other. He kept them close to each other. Read on. And by the border of Ephraim, from the east side even unto the west side, a portion for Reuben. So what happens when you go down to uh, Florida, right? You get Reuben and you get Gad down in Florida, right next to Puerto Rico and Manessa. So who's bordering Ephraim over here? You got uh, a portion for Reuben. A portion for Reuben, right? Read on. And by the border of Reuben, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Judah. A portion for Judah. Who's bordering uh, uh, Reuben here in the Americas? When we were finally brought over here on the east coast, of, we just happened to be brought to the east side of the, the, uh, the, the country as well. Judah. Right? Read on. And by the border of Judah, from the east side unto the west side, shall be offered which ye shall offer of five and twenty thousand reeds in breadth, in length as one of the other parts, from the east side unto the west side, and the sanctuary shall be in the midst of it. Con, right? So that's basically, again, showing just a small portion of how the Most High kept his people together, right? He kept us together. He kept us together on, 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 in borders of each other. So one people will border the next. You see that in South America, Central America, and you see that here in the Americas. We border each other. Right, the southern tribes they border each other in the land that the northern tribes are in, and the Most High did that throughout all of history with us. He always kept us right around each other, even though we were scattered to all four corners of the earth. He always kept a remnant of our people bordering each other all the way here to our last captivity here in spiritual Egypt, Mystery Babylon, America. Right? Let's get Second Chronicles 20 and verse 4, Baba Kishaw. Khan, this is Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 4. When they have a say, Khan, Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 4. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of, the, of, of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek Yahweh. Right. And what does Judah do today? Right. Even if it's not Judah, that's not in the truth, right? Judah gathers together, and they 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 come to ask help of the Lord. That's what that's what we do, right? That's that's what happened here in the Americas. The Southern tribe, we gathered together and we came and we asked to, for the Most High to help us, 
right? And in this, this reading here, this is where the Most High defeats Esau, Moab, and Ammon. He defeats three of our main enemies because Judah gathered together and seek sought the Most High's help. And the Most High we, we actually told us to, to praise him. So we sung songs. Judah gathered together and sung songs together, right? And the Most High defeated our enemies. I think that's when you drop down to verse uh, 17. Read verse 17, uh, Cap. Verse 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Ah, for the Lord is with us, right? We didn't even have to fight. We don't have to fight. We just got to gather together, go out to the highways and the hedges, and do the work of the Most High. Do what the Most High asked and commanded us to do. Go out fishing on the highways and hedges and go out and feed the sheep. And the Most High is going to fight for us. And that's what we see happen through the prophecies. And when we see these prophecies happening, that's the Most High fighting for us. Because he sees we have faith in Yahweh Shai, that we have faith Yahweh Shai is going to come in return and reap the harvest back unto the Most High. And we have faith that we are Israelites and that we got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Drop that and get Isaiah 11 and verse 13. But that's one of my favorite stories to read in the Bible with King Jehoshaphat, right? That also goes into the Most High gathering the nations together in the land of Jehoshaphat based on the story right there that happened with Jehoshaphat. He was king. Right? Um, bring that out when you got it, Cap. Isaiah 11 and 13. Uh, and Salaki, Jehoshaphat also means uh, like of judgment. Like Yahweh Shapat, which also means of judgment. So Second Chronicle, that's a mighty one, because it showed um, when it was singing, it's like us singing today, which is us just teaching the word of the Lord. You know, that, that new song. Instead of the song of Moses in the Old Testament, the new song, which is the scriptures. And waking our people up to the truth. And then if you read uh, 2 Chronicles 20, it shows you that the heathens start to have a strong delusion and they start to fight and kill each other. So the same armies that teamed up to try to destroy us, now they're going against each other. And look what's happening today. Time. Well, I was just teaching the Bible. Now these armies starting to go against each other. World War Three. And after they got destroyed, uh, verse 25, it says... Salaki. It says, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil, and it was so much. That's that's beautiful. <laughs> God, God, that's is that that that's why I said that's what that's my about to happen. Huh? Yep. That's one of my favorite war stories in the scriptures. We didn't even have to go fight the war. All we had to do was praise the Most High. All we had to do was sing the new song. And that's what we're doing now. Like you say, Cap, we're singing a new song that the Most High is going to come and fight the battles for us and bring his prophecies to pass. And all we got to do is, is love the Most High and keep his commandments. That's it. And go out and do the work. And as we continue to do that, we see what the Most High is doing over the past few years, bringing the famine, bringing the pestilence, Bringing the, the 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 tornadoes, right? The whole the whole middle of America right now is on a tornado watch because the Most High is not playing no game because he, he brought his prophets back onto the earth to go out and do the work, to go out and teach the people who they are, to go out and teach true repentance in the name of Yahweh Shai. To ask to, to to truly be asking for forgiveness of our sins and showing that we want forgiveness by turning away from our wicked ways and 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 humbling ourselves, like it says in the book of Chronicles, we got to humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, humble ourselves, and the Most High will hear our prayers. Right. Um. All praises, Cap. Uh, what we said, Isaiah eleven and thirteen. Follow for sure. Yeah. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter eleven. In verse number 13, the envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. God, we're not going to vex each other. We're not vexing each other no more, right? 
We working together. We working together to bring about the kingdom. We working together and seeking the kingdom first before seeking our own glory, before seeking the glory on the block and seeking our rep and, and, and trying to be the, be the hottest on the block. Trying to seek out the 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 and get new territory and and rob each other and steal from each other. Now nah, we seeking to build each other up. That's why they put in all these these thoughts into our head and trying to have a uh, uh, control and program us and con and control our minds to make it so that, especially in Chicago, you, you see right now they keep putting on the news that they want the blacks to go against the immigrants that are coming in across the border. So they try to make the the so called African American man go against the 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 span the Hispanic man, right? When they, we we're not talking about how they giving uh uh housing and funding to the Afghanistan to the Ukrainian to the to the Asian man, they giving business loans out, they giving houses out, they giving credit cards out, they giving all these different things out to to the to the to the Ukrainian immigrant to the afghanistan immigrant to all these other nations that are coming into america and have no problem getting a business loan the chinese man got a whole damn chinatown full of chinese stores with chinese right going to chinatown in new york uh down canal street you don't even know what the hell half those stores is for because everything is written in chinese same thing here in dc in the little section of chinatown they got you don't know what the hell's going on over there how all them people got all them businesses and, and, and things started up so quick, how they get the housing for their, their uh, people. But it's but one thing they try to make it seem like in the news is that, oh, the, the, the Hispanic man coming over the border, that's a detriment to the black man. No, they just want to pit Judah and Ephraim against each other. But that's why it's important for us to go out and say the envy of, of Ephraim shall depart. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not harass Ephraim. We got to go teach that to our people and teach them that it's the white man's narrative and the white man's predictive programming and mind control that is trying to make us go against these immigrants. And these immigrants are our people. And that's why the Most High is bringing them over into America in the thousands and, and uh, hundreds of thousands so that we can teach them so that Judah who get who the tents of Judah shall be saved first. The tents of Judah is going to recognize first, like we just read uh, in, in, in the scriptures. Now, all of a sudden, the Most High is bringing them over the borders so that we can teach them that they're Israelites and help right. wake up the northern tribes. But you see what the wicked Edomites are doing and the wicked news media is doing is trying to pit us against each other. Oh, they taking all the jobs. Oh, they taking all the housing. Oh, they not giving us funding. They not giving us uh, uh, reparations. They not giving us the same things that they give to them. Who cares? We don't want your damn reparations. Right. We don't need your damn funding. Send us more people so that we could teach and wake up. I was just in a in a uh, taxi the other day talking to a sister, and she was saying, "Oh, so many uh, Northern Tribe brothers." Uh, she didn't say Northern Tribe Brothers. She's like, you know, so many Spanish people, they be on the motorbikes all around. The government is giving them free motorbikes. And I was like, yeah, send us some more Spanish brothers to get some more free motorbikes and make money off this system. And to come in and take over this country so that the Most High could send them by our camps and we could speak in tongues to them. And we could have some more Spanish brothers that speak Spanish and speak these other languages. Because you see what they do to the to the Levite at the border. They send the Levite right back into hell. Because you see what's going on in Haiti right now. They got no problem letting the Ukrainian come over. But the Haitian, who's who's way closer than Ukraine, they send them right back into, into, the, into, uh, into destruction. They let the Ukrainian come over and open up his damn uh, business to sell schnitzels. And then they still put our people in the slums. They put them in the in the hoods right next to us and try and make it look like they're doing better than us. No, they do it. If anything, they're doing worse than we do. Because I not one of us tried to go cross the border and escape into, into another damn country. You got a, a small remnant of people that went into Jerusalem or that went back to Israel 
They got a small remnant of people that go to Gaza and go to go try and go back to Africa. But the majority of us, we 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 good in the hood. And we 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 even stay there and, and we do our best to try and make it up out the hood into the damn white man's suburbs. Or go get our own little piece of land in the country somewhere. But we ain't doing what the Northern tribe is doing. The Northern, Northern tribe is risking life and limb going through damn shark infested waters and, and, and trying to cut through the Amazon jungle to get them to America. And that's because that's the most high sending them here for us to be able to teach them that they're Israelites to repent, keep the commandments and keep faith in Yahweh Shah. And just so happened, we was at camp the other day and it was two Northern tribe brothers, a, a Issacharite brother and a Zebulonite brother. And they was with two Southern tribe brothers, a Benjamite and a Judite. And they stood and they listened. And they was able to say when they left camp that they, 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 they understand to keep, they need to keep the commandments and that they understand that they're Israelites. All praise to the Most High. Because the Most High is not going to allow Ephraim and Judah to have beef anymore. So we can't run with this narrative that the new, we got to speak against the, what the news is saying, what the media is trying to put into our people's heads. And we got to embrace our brothers from the Northern tribe. We got to understand that they, they have just as many inventors and have created and invented just as many things that they just, as, they, they better than us at baseball. Right, we had Ken Griffey. They better than us. They got Big Poppy, David Ortiz. Hey, they better than us at baseball. They gotta admit we better than them at basketball, right? And so on and so forth. But that's because we part of the twelve tribes. We the salt of the earth, right? Um, get Zechariah twelve and seven, Bobby Kishaw. And we almost finished everybody. We just got probably two more slides left, maybe. And I think it's mainly pictures. Zechariah 12 and 7. This is Zechariah oh. chapter 12 and verse 7. Oh. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That the, the Lord, glory of the house of... The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. So that's what we was just going into. The Lord has saved the tents of Judah first. He saved us first. Here in the Americas, he saved the tents of Judah. Benjamin and Levi, the, the southern tribe, he saved us first. And now we got to bring this, these scriptures to our brothers and sisters in the northern tribe, into Ephraim, into the tents of Joseph. We got to bring these, uh, bring it together and bring all of us together, all of the 12 tribes. Read on, Cap. He saved the tents of Judah first. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Ah. That's why the Most High gave it to Judah first, right? So the rest of Israel wouldn't magnify themselves against Yahweh, right? They won't magnify themselves against the house of David. They'll understand we all submit to Yahweh, and Yahweh is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And it's him who's going to raise up the rest of all of Israel. It's the house of Judah who's going to raise up the rest of all of Israel. So Ephraim can't vex us no more, and we can't vex Ephraim no more. Southern tribe can't vex the northern tribe. We got to come together under Yahweh Shai and seek first the Most High's kingdom, which is where all the 12 tribes are together and all of the talent that we have, the intelligent we have, intelligence we have, and the abilities that we have all now come together. Our sisters come together and work together. Our brothers come together and go to war together. Because could you just imagine all the things that, that will be invented in the kingdom when now we have spiritual powers, we have a supernatural, super, uh, a super intelligence. And we have these super godlike abilities made to be as angels. The type of things that, yeah, we're going to we're going to go to war. We're going to we're going to destroy uh, 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 our enemies and we're going to we're going to bring our enemies before the most high and slay uh, before the before the feet of Yahweh and slay them in the name of the most high and give glory to the most high. But imagine the things that we're going to be able to create, the lights that we're going to be able to shine, the salt that we're going to be able to sprinkle. If we could do all of these things while in captivity and coming out of captivity while having our land stolen. Imagine the things we're actually going to be able to do when Yahweh is leading us. 
the tents of Judah is going to rise up and they they rising up here in the Americas. That's why it was the tents of Judah who started this movement and who have now solidified the Israelites as the chosen people of God have brought to remembrance and woke up a new generation of people and it's up to us to continue on and to endure and to be consistent. <clears throat> right? Drop that and get Second Chronicles 17 and 9, Robert Bishop. This is Second Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 9. And they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them and went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. And that's what we do. We have the book of the law and we go out through all the cities and we teach out of the book of the law. You see, this is what the Most High wants us to do, right? That's why Judah was saved first because Judah took the law and Judah went throughout all the cities and Judah taught out of the book. In, in all the cities in the book of the law, Judah taught out of these cities, right? This is when, this is again during Jehoshaphat's reign. Josephat was a, 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 a from Judah. Josephat was from the tribe of Judah. And they took the book of the law and went and retaught the law to all of the people. And as they began to reteach the law to all of the people, the Most High came and fought the battle for them. Right? Because we in 17, we just read chapter 20. So three chapters later, as the law is being taught from chapter 17 on to the Israelites, now the Most High comes, and the Most High comes in and fights the battle. That's why it says the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat dealing with judgment. The Valley of Jehoshaphat dealing with decision-making. That's what's happening right now. The law is going out and being taught. And now these other nations have to make a decision. What decision do they have to make? The same decision that Pharaoh made in Egypt, whether he was going to let us go or not let us go. And the most high hardened Pharaoh's heart, so he wouldn't let us go. So it's the most high hardened in these Edomites' heart so that they won't let us go, so that he can come and destroy them. Because it's the most high who's going to fight for us. Just like Moses told us in Exodus. Uh, I think it's Exodus 14 and 14. The most high is going to fight our battles for us. We only got to be silent. We don't got to say nothing. Your family members coming at you, different uh, friends coming at you, these Edomites trying to come at us, these Christian apologists come, trying to come at us. We don't got to say nothing. Just keep doing the work. And, and anything that we say, get it right out of the book. Give them book, chapter, and verse. Well, this is what the scriptures say. Don't argue with me. Argue with the Most High. Right? Get Ezekiel chapter 37. And we're going to do 14 through 17. Right? Anybody that wants to take down the scriptures, um, for the most part, uh, these are the scriptures that we utilize tonight. We went to Genesis 25. Um, we went to Romans 9 earlier. So we, we had a few other scriptures. But I haven't figured out how to put the actual lesson in the chat. But if anybody wants the, the actual slides, you can always reach out to me. I can give those over to you. Um, you can screenshot them again while we're going along throughout the verses. Um, but you can bring that out, Cap, when you got it, Ezekiel 37, 14 through 17. And this is an exciting time to see the tents of Judah rising up. It's an exciting time to see Israel rising up together. It's an exciting time to see our brothers and sisters coming over the border in the hundreds of thousands so that we can teach them who they are. Right? Bring it out when you got it, King. It's Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that the Lord has spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand. Right. And this is what the Most High is doing, joining together the house of Joseph, the northern tribes, with the house of Judah, 
the southern tribes and he's joining us together and so that we become one we become one stick right and we got to give all praise to the most high for that this is just a quote from martin luther king um cap you can get ecclesiastes 7 and 29 martin luther king is quoted and almost always the creative dedicated minority has made the world better we are that my we are the so-called minority. When you put all 12 tribes together, we become the majority. Right? But remember, the most high said he placed his love on us because we was the least of all people, not because we was the biggest and the baddest, not because we was keeping all his commandments, not because we deserved it in any way. But the most high placed his love upon us because we was the least of all people. We was his chosen, we was his peculiar portion, we was his favorite. So the most high, we was the apple of his eye. We are the apple of his eye. We are his favorite. We are his peculiar treasure. So the most high placed his love upon us, right? But it's almost always Martin Luther King is quoted as saying, the dedicated minority has made the world better. It is us who makes the world better. We are the salt of the earth. With the inventions that we invent, with the joy that we bring to people when they watch our sports players and they watch our our uh, actors and they, they listen to our singers and our entertainers, we make the world better with the uh, contributions that we make to this world. That's right. Yeah. Right? We didn't create the nuclear bomb or the atom bomb. We didn't drop a bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We didn't go out and start World War I or World War II or World War Three, but all of them have been started for the sake of us. World War Three is being started for the sake of the chosen people. World War Three is being started so that the chosen people can remember who they are. The remnant can gather together and seek after the kingdom. Because it's the most high's will being done. It's the most high gathering together his people and bringing us back together. But it's <laughs> our creations and our inventions that have made the world better. Bring that out when you got it, Cap. Ecclesiastes 7 and 29. Re regular Ecclesiastes. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that God have made man upright, but they have sought many inventions. Slocky, but they have sought out many inventions. Ah, right? The Most High made us upright, and we've made many inventions. We've sought after many inventions, right? We've made, that's what I said, through his wisdom and his knowledge, we have made many witty inventions like we read earlier. Right. So we made a lot of different inventions. Some of those inventions, like we, we've seen the Northern tribe brother created damn birth control pill. Some of our inventions was bad. Most of the white man's inventions were bad and were made for war. Right. But the most high has made us Israel upright in our heart. And then he gave us the law that we would remain righteous and remain upright and be wise in the sight of the nations. But it's because we choose to leave the most high, we lose our salt and we become good for nothing. Right. And, and, and we don't get credit for our inventions. Right. So all 12 tribes are talented and blessed to be above all nations. Right. You'll find that in uh, the blessings that we read in Deuteronomy 33, when Moses blessed us. We'll find that in Deuteronomy uh, chapter seven and six, that we're chosen to be above all nations. We'll find that in Deuteronomy four and verse six to 11, where when we keep the commandments, it will be our wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. We'll find that in Deuteronomy chapter six and 25, that keeping the law is our righteousness in the sight of the nations. Right. That keeping the law is our, is our righteousness in the sight of the most high. When he sees us keeping the law, he sees us actually loving him and he loves us back. When we don't keep the law, he has to place the curses upon us because that's what his word says. Right. But when he sees us keeping the law, he, he places his blessings upon us individually. And then as a nation, he'll place his blessings upon the whole nation when all of us begin to keep the law, which is why we have to teach the law. Like we read earlier, the law is not done away with. Christ didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. But came to fulfill the law, meaning when he says he came to fulfill the law, he came to keep the law and teach us again and to reemphasize to us again the truth of the law and to keep the truth in the law. Right. Deuteronomy, you can get Deuteronomy 14 and two real quick, Cap, but it just 
re-emphasizes again that the 12 tribes are talented and blessed to be above all nations. We are God's chosen people. Uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse number two. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord Yahweh, thy God. And Yahweh thy God has chosen thee to be a special, a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. That's why we have the best inventors. We have the best creators. We have the best musicians. We have the best athletes. We are the best scholastically because the Most High chose us to be peculiar, to be unique, to be separate from everybody else. And to be above everybody else. Khan? Khan. Uh, oh, crazy. Uh, so you look at this, and now you see there's another book. This book costs $350. For $350, Amalek is going to try and explain to you why they are the best. A study of Jewish intelligence and achievement by Richard Lynn, the chosen people. A study of Jewish intelligence. $350.50 on Amazon, right? Get Revelation, or, or we already know the classic Revelation 2 and 9, Revelation 3 and 9, those who call themselves Jews and are not, but do lie. So these people lie, and they've put it in books that, that they are the chosen people. They put it in books that, that, that they are of a certain intelligence level, above our intelligence level. But when we go back to the beginning of the lesson, we see that we're two separate people. So one has to be smarter than the other. One has to be stronger than the other. One has to be better than the other. So that's why the Revelation 2 and 9 says these people lie and say that they're Jews, but they're not. So they lie and say that they're the best comedians the best actors, the, the best uh, at invention the uh, uh, and, and creating, the most intelligent. But really, all of what Amalek does is take and exploit us. It's usually Amalek who are owning the, uh, the production studios in Hollywood, the music studios in the music industry. Right. right. They, they take us and our talent and they exploit it to make it look like. They are the ones that are feeding the industry and the masses, but they only feed in the industry and the masses with lies. Right. Get Psalm 99 and verse eight. Baba Kishaw. But just this goes just to show you that don't get it twisted. Amalek is going to try and tell you that he's the chosen race, that he's the chosen people above all other people. And then they're going to put it in a book for three hundred and fifty dollars. I would like to see what they have in that, but I don't have that book. I'm not paying three hundred and fifty. I couldn't find the PDF either. So I just had to take a copy in the front of it. But I'm not paying three hundred and fifty dollars and fifty cents to see the chosen people, a study of Jewish intelligence and achievements. The hell did the Jewish man achieve? And 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 uh, and Ted, they just came about uh, as a a, a a race and nation of people after World War Two. That's right. Prior to 1948, they they weren't even a, a, a mass group of people. By 1948, we saw all of the achievements we had uh, academically. We saw all the achievements we had. Uh, uh, in the sports world, we saw the uh, the inventions and the inventors and creators that we had. What were they doing prior to 1948? They wasn't doing a damn thing prior to the Belfort Declaration. They was amassing a certain amount of money so that they can go in and purchase and, and put up money for that land that that they so called state claim to now and are committing mass genocide against the Palestinians right now. Both of them don't belong in that land. Going back to numbers where we read that Gad and Reuben was going in and building on that land. We took out the Canaanites. That's what the Most High told us to do. And when the Most High gave us that land that was promised to us, we went and we began to build cities. 
and the document, the documentary evidence is here, right here in the scriptures. That's why they don't like us going out and speaking against the Israelis and the Palestinians, that they are both in the land that the Most High gave to us. Land in which we went in and built cities. We built the temple in Jerusalem. Solomon used the hand of Israelites to build that temple. Although it was a rigorous hand, it was purposely done so that other nations couldn't take the glory away from the Israelites. It was us. It, the, the temple had to be built by us because it was for our God. You don't want no pagan people building up the temple. Just like right now, we don't want these pagan people building up the temple that of our bodies. Because really all they do is tear our temples down. Use and abuse us. But that's what these damn these, these uh, so-called uh, the study of Jewish intelligence and, and achievement, right? You see the DNA um, um, uh, symbol on on the book and everything, trying to say that it's in their DNA to be of a, a level of intelligence above everybody else, to have the achievements better than everybody else. But if you look at the achievements and creations inventions of our people we outnumber them especially when you put all 12 tribes together you can't take a list of the so-called edomite or, or the, the so-called white man the edomite amalek and ashkenazi you can't take a list of their inventions and compare it to the list of our inventions especially uh. if they take away the stuff that they stole from us and the patents that they stole from us. Like we read, Columbus went and took rubber over to Europe and now all of a sudden, oh, the, the, the Goodyear ain't paying the, the, the Native Americans for creating rubber. But they sure as hell is profiting, profiting off, of it, off of it. Goodyear, Michelin, Firestone, Pirelli, all these different tire places. Right? Get that real quick, Cap, when you got it. Psalm 99 and verse 8, Father Kishore. Uh, this is Psalms chapter 99 and verse 8. Thou answered them, O Yahweh our God, thou was a God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Right. Most high took he and, and it, that's talking about us, right? Where the most high he forgave us, but his vengeance was taken out on us because we had to go into captivity. We had to go under the curses because of the things that we invented. And the things that we were doing in terms of making false idols, inventing these, these, these wise tales and fables and all these different things that we would go after, the Most High sent his vengeance upon us, right? Because of our deeds, because of the things that we did that was wrong, because we tried to follow after Edom and Ashkenazi. We, had, we tried to follow after the Babylonians. We tried to follow after the Egyptians. So the most high, his vengeance came upon us first. That's why you always see in the scriptures, judgment is going to start at the house of Israel. But all praise to the most high through Yahweh Shai, the most high removed his vengeance off of Israel. We still had to go through the curses, but no longer is the most high trying to be vengeful against us. No more is the most high trying to destroy Israel. Like the most high went to Moses and said, look, I'll destroy these people and create another one. And Moses intervened for us. Now Yahawashai steps in there and Yahawashai advocates and Yahawashai intervenes and Yahawashai prays for us and asks the Most High, don't destroy your chosen people. Don't uh, let, let, let me come in and save them and teach them the right way. And the Most High gave Yahawashai that authority in heaven and on earth to come and redeem his people back unto him to get us right. And it's the small remnant that's that's keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments and faith in Yahweh Shai. Because you got plenty of uh, Negro-only Israelites uh, or, or plenty of Old Testament-only Israelites that don't have faith in Yahweh Shai, that will argue against their own brothers and sisters that Yahweh Shai is not the savior of Israel. But he came to redeem his people from their sins. So he came to remove that vengeance off of us. He came to teach us the law so that we will be blessed and no longer have to live under the curses. We're going to have to wait till the kingdom comes for all of Israel to be under the blessing. 
and no longer cursed by our own wicked deeds and our own wicked disobedience. Drop that and get Psalm 106 and 29, Baba Kishore, which is why it's so important for us to stop being disobedient and stop being rebellious because that will bring a curse upon you. Right? Bring that out when you got it. Psalm 106 and 29. Uh, this is Psalms 106 and verse 29. Thus they provoke him to anger with their inventions and the plague break in upon them. Right. That's talking about us with our inventions, right? With, 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 as, as intelligent as we are and, and all the things that we able to create and that we able to do, the most high, we provoked him to anger. This is talking about us, right? If you read a couple verses, uh, it says he's and scatter them in the lands. We joined ourselves to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices made to the dead. So it's talking about us. We provoke the most high to anger because of our deeds. When it talk about our and inventions, it's talking about the things that we did as well as the things that we created. Because it was us who who was the stone smiths, the blacksmiths that was building up these statues for these other nations. They used us. We was in captivity. So they were using us. Just like it shows in Egypt that Pharaoh used us to build the cities of Ramses. So who do you think was, was writing these hieroglyphics and doing all these different things? It wasn't no damn stupid Egyptian. It was us who was building up the pyramid, uh, the pyramid, and the, the obelisk, and and the sphinx. All that stuff is us. And we eventually chose to worship these type of these different type of things that were, were inventions uh, and 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 vain thoughts of man. And we provoked the Most High to anger. That's explained in the last verse that we read. Jump down to verse thirty nine, Baba Kishon. Come. Verse 39. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. Instead of us keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, we went whoring after the things that we could create out of our own mind. And then the Edomites took it and they would run with it. They would take things that we would create and they would run with it. They would create their own myths, their own legends. They would patent our inventions. They would take our talents and exploit them and use them for their own gain. But that's because we got defiled with our own works, the own works of our hands. And it says we played the harlot. We acted like a hoe, going from nation to nation to nation, going from captivity to captivity to captivity, and we still wouldn't learn. Until we finally, the Most High brought us here into our last captivity and has now begun to teach us to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments through our elders. That have taught us that we're Israelites and must keep the commandments and have faith in Yahweh. Right? And when you read the next verse, read the next one, Cap 40. Verse 40. Therefore was the wrath of Yahweh kindled against his people. Just like we just read. That's the explanation of what we read in Psalm 99. The wrath of Yahweh, the vengeance of Yahweh, his anger was kindled against his own people. Read on. In so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. Most High hated us at one point. He went to Moses and he said, Liz, this is going all the way back to us coming out of Egypt and creating and inventing a damn golden calf taking all the riches that we just got from the people who sent us, uh, uh, who, who, who let us go by the will of the Most High, by the hand of the Almighty. We was let go out of, of Egypt just to go into to, uh, uh, mental slavery by creating a golden calf right away. Wanted to party so bad. Wanted to have a good time partying bullshit so bad that we went and created a golden calf. And now Moses is up there trying to plead for us. Don't don't kill him, Lord. Don't. And Most High said he would wipe all of us out and create a whole new church. He wasn't going to choose that. One thing that I take out of that verse is that the Most High wasn't going to choose another nation. He was going to create a whole new Israel. He wasn't going to go choose Edom. He wasn't going to go choose Moab. He wasn't going to go choose Ishmael. 
because the Ishmael thinks that they became the chosen people or, or were always were the chosen people. Edom feels that he, uh, the birthright of being chosen was stolen from him. Well, I, I want to say this about me. Right, but no, none of that happened. The Most High said he he wasn't going to choose Edom. He wasn't going to choose Ishmael. He was going to create a whole new chosen people. And Moses pled for us while we was in the wilderness, like Yahweh Shai is pleading for us before the throne of the Most High right now, and waking up the hundred and forty four thousand and sealing our minds with the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Right. Read verse forty one. And for we're gonna go to 42. Uh, uh, 43 actually. Uh, yes, Locke, you want to say something? I think somebody says Locke. No, I think that's their TV in the background. Uh you said read verse what? Uh 41 to 43. All right. Verse 41. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen. And they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked them with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. So because of our sins and because of our rebellion, we got brought low. That's why I said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Sin is what gets us uh, placed under the curses instead of receiving the blessing. It says many times the Most High came to deliver us. And it says we was given into the hand of the heathen, into the hand of our enemies who oppressed us. It says we was given into the hand of those who hated us and those who hated us ruled over us. Who hates us? We know that Esau has a perpetual hatred for Jacob. So eventually we was given into the hand of Esau. We also know that Ishmael, has a hatred for Jacob because Ishmael wanted the blessing that Isaac got. Esau wants the blessing that Jacob got. Ishmael wants the blessing that Isaac got. And because of the hatred that Esau has, the hatred that Ishmael has, a nation that who joined to, those two nations joined together during the time of Ishmael because Ishmael took himself uh, or Esau took Ishmaelite wives. And they've been fighting to get their blessing back from us ever since. They hated us. That's who ruled over us. So the Most High is showing you right there. You got to link the scripture together, the, the perpetual hatred that Esau had over us. That's how you know and you see that they ruled over us. The sub-Saharan slave trade, when they uh, Ishmael ruled and, and we were given into the hand of the heathen and Ishmael ruled over us. The Hamites ruled over us going all the way back into Egypt. Right. So the most high gave us into the hand of our enemies because we did not keep his commandments and because we were rebellious. That's why as a people and as individuals, we have to stop being rebellious. We have to teach our people to stop rebelling. Teach our children to stop being rebellious. Teach our women to stop being rebellious. Teach our people how to stop sinning and living lives in, caught up in the iniquity of their sins and living wickedly, right? And this is the last slide. It just says, why is it so hard for my people to see the truth? Just because you were taught a lie, now you want to lie to me. I see the light. I know who I am, that I am the chosen people of the one true father and creator. Yes, I am Israel. And that con concludes tonight's lesson. I hope everybody was blessed. All Play praise God. Everything's good. Uh, Con. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any comments or questions or precepts they'd like to bring out? Ah, uh, Salak here. Yeah. I just wanted to um say thank you uh for the lesson and two, thank you again for the heads up about uh the tornadoes in the central US. I'm driving right now from Atlanta to Houston tonight. Um keep me in prayer. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, God will be done. You know what I mean? Righteous and true is the judgment. So it is what it is. But um I just uh I had uh four inventions I wanted to um uh acquire to Israel real quick. And I and I say again real quick, let just do it real quick. If you will, first Kings chapter four and verse thirty. 
Bible can show. Time, First Kings right. chapter and thirty. No, I got it. This is yeah. First Kings chapter four and verse number thirty. In Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. And that right there is playing upon tables. Uh, he, you know what I mean, was the man when it came to wisdom. And could you jump to verse 34? Con. Verse 34. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. And, and uh, all praise to the most high. That right there is the invention of universities, schools, and a place of gathering to uh, get education and learning. Right there. Um, oh. And uh, let me see. Uh, First Kings uh, 6 and 8, right over on the next page. 6 God. and 8. This Number is First show. Kings, First Kings chapter 6 and verse 8. The door for the middle of the chamber was in the right side of the house. And they went up with winding stairs into the middle chamber and out of the middle into the third. God, like an elevator. Right, right there. It, it, exactly. And winding stairs too to get from one uh, floor to the next floor. Um, I read somewhere in there uh, where we had keels on our ship. And the importance of keels, uh, if, if, the, if, if the wind blew onto the sails, it would blow the ship over onto its side and the ship would capsize. But the keel of the ship is like a counterbalance and it keeps the ship from, from blowing over and it allows you to be able to harness the wind as fuel to be able to travel on the water. So the keel of the ship, I believe, uh, King either Solomon or King David, I, I was looking it up to try to find it, but I couldn't find it. And I tried to look on Google. As smart as Google is, they they not going they not going to let you know that is inside the Bible that we had killed. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then uh, the last invention is uh, Genesis chapter two and verse seven. Uh, Robert Shaw. This is Genesis chapter two and verse seven. And Yahweh God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God. And uh, <clears throat> that's not the first human that was uh, put on the earth, but right there, uh, Adam was uh, given wisdom and understanding. And right there, you can uh, uh, credit the uh, invention of time itself to Israel. You know what I mean? Because they wouldn't even know which way is up or down if, if it was up to them. And I digress. Ah. Okay. Yeah, beautiful scriptures, man. Ah, King. And drive safe out there. We see you out there driving on the road, man. I see it's raining out there with you. So definitely Godspeed. We're going to pray for you to make it to and from your destination. And the Most High give you safe travel and mercies. The Most High will be done. So make sure you stay safe out there to all our brothers and, and sisters that's out there on the road driving. I know we got a few um, a few truck drivers here in the house of Israel. Um, Brother Choni, Sister Stephanie, Brother Yatai. So definitely uh, safe travel and mercies and Godspeed to y'all while y'all out on the highways and the byways trying to make a dollar out of 15 cent, man. All praises to the Most High. And those are some beautiful precepts and beautiful scriptures. There, there are many inventions, you know, that, that, that our people have uh, contributed to the world and contributed to society and and the evidence is there within the scriptures and it's up to us to go out to the highways and the hedges and to tell our people how important they are uh, to, to function in uh, civilization and to help in civilization function and, and to be in decency and in order. If it wasn't for our people, it would be nothing but chaos going on in the world right now. And um and the and the world is still full of chaos because our people have have tried to follow after the wicked ways of 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 uh of these other nations. But as we continue to come back to His laws, statutes, and commandments, and keep faith in Yahweh Shai, you see the Most High is changing the music. We got truth music now. I think uh, Priest of Box said uh that group um that uh Say La Soul they was on BET recently so you know to to have an israelite group 
go out and uh and and uh and 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 get a spot on BET is very big. Um, that's going to lead to more truth music. Um, being able to go out to the masses and to help bring our people back to the Most High and bring us back to the Lord's statutes and commandments, Khan, all for the Most High says, because um, this this truth music, you know, we got some surprises coming for you at uh, at the Passover. So everybody that's going to be attending the Passover, come ready to uh, to to do like Jehoshaphat had had Israel do, and uh, and party and 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 glorify and praise. And honor the Most High through praise and through, through worship and through music, just like King David to King Jehoshaphat did. And um, and we going we going you know we going ask the Most High to put fire, or this nuclear fire up on this nation and and to to bring Esau to his knees, and and uh, destroy the, the these wicked nations that uh, that come against him and that come against his chosen people. So all praises to the most high, um, any announcements cap, if you want to handle, I know this, uh, we got a new moon, new year coming up at the end of the week and then Passover coming up right after that. So if you want to jump into that, uh, and then I'll go ahead and close us out with the Lord's prayer and, uh, uh, the Shema, the creed of Israel. God, God, Oh, praise your by Shimei Shai. Beautiful, beautiful lesson again. Okay. Great lesson, man. I know Shemaya had this book. I got to find out what was the name of the book again. It talks about all the inventions that we created as so-called black people in America. And it was it was thousands. It was thousands. You know, but I'll, I'll find the name of the book and I'll, I'll send it to um, put it on the group chat and everything. A uh, quick update and a reminder. Uh, April 7th, just make sure I got it. Uh, no, it's supposed to be April. I think it's what April seventh or eighth, the new moon, new year. Sparky. Slocket, can you hear me? Hey, Cap. All right, come on. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be April. Uh, it's supposed to be this Sunday or Sunday night, which will be April 7th. It's a new year. It's supposed to have a new year, new moon, feast day celebration. So, be your first. First in the Hebrew calendar, which is a bib, also known as N Nisan, and it's the new year. So that's April seventh. Um, it's funny, April eighth. I think it's supposed to be that solar eclipse. So that's literally tying into the new moon and new year, <laughs> the same time frame as well. Um, April twenty first, you no, know, like April nineteenth and twentieth, will be the camp that we'll be having in Philadelphia April 20th um, at the night time around 8pm will be the HOI uh, gathering you know feast before the Passover which will be April 21st on a Sunday so the beautiful thing is we have April 7th which is the new moon new year on a Sunday and it's funny because the Lord is lining up everything and, and how it's supposed to be in righteousness. Because the first day of the week is what? It's supposed to be Sunday, right? And the last day of the week is supposed to be Saturday. So it's funny how the feast days is lining up on the first day of the week, which is on the 7th, and also for the Passover is on the 21st. Right? And then 7 also ties in the completion. And then 7 times 3 is 21. So everything ties up. You know, praise you. How about you know, shy? And a quick wow. reminder for those that haven't sent in their um, Passover funds, you know, it's definitely needed to send in your Passover funds as soon as possible. All right, send over your Passover funds as soon as possible. Um, a family of one to three is supposed to be a hundred dollars in total, and a family of four and up is supposed to be two hundred, two hundred or three hundred. So, Baba Kusha, please send in your Passover funds um, to the elder. 
because he's still calling on brothers and sisters to make sure they're able to send their Passover funds. We have a deadline, and the deadline is going to be this weekend, April 7th, which is basically the new moon. So, and then we got Ham this time, this, this damn idiot, demon bastard. You know, we don't make the deadline. He's going to try to triple it. So the venue that we got, you know, we're selling brothers and sisters. Uh, the cash out for the elder is Zabak 12. Dollar sign Zabak 12. So those that's making it to the Passover, Boca Sharp, please send in your funds for the Passover. And also those that's not able to make it, you can still send in funds as alms. You know, that we de definitely appreciate it. Khan? Khan? Uh -huh. So, uh, once again, the cash out for the elder is Zabak 12. Dollar sign Zabak, Z-A-B-A-C-H, and the number 12. So, and like I was saying, all is definitely needed. So, um, yeah, that's it so far. And I yield. God, all praise to the Most High, the Wadi Yahweh, the Wadi Yahweh Shai bringing us together for another Iron Sharpens Iron. Uh, we're going to give everybody a couple seconds to face the East. As we say, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. And uh, it's the Lord's Prayer in the Paleo-Hebrew. Abba Shabbat Shemayim, Kadash, Haya, Shemka, Yahweh, Malak Wachka, Taba'a, Ratzaka, Haya, Aisha, Baratza, Kawa, Haya, Bashamayam, Nathalanawa, Lacham, Kal, Yawam, Wasalakanawa, Kabawakfinawa, Kasalakanawa, Kabawakfinawa, Walaa, Tabayanawa, Manasayawam, Abal, Hawashinawa, Man, Rai, Haya, Laka, Hamalakwa, Wahala, Watabara, Lalayayam, Man, our Father, which art in heaven. Our Lord is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for giving us this day, our daily bread. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. Oh, we also forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us and guide us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, so book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Shema Yashar Allah Yahawa Allah Hainawa Yahawa Ah Shema Yashar Allah Yahawa Allah Hainawa Yahawa Ah Shema Yashar Allah Yahawa Allah Hainawa Yahawa Ah Therefore hear O Israel and be careful to observe it that it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord your God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. When you lie down and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. All praises to the Most High, the Wadi Yahweh, the Wadi Yahweh Shai. We ask that Yahweh would continue to do his work and continue to do his will, continue to give us the strength to go out and feed the sheep and to go out onto the highways and the hedges to do the Most High's will. All praises to the Most High that his will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask that the Most High would continue to bless and raise up Israel, his chosen people, and that we would continue to have faith and our trust and place our hope in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord and our Savior. And we will continue to glorify, honor, and praise the Most High God, our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In Yahweh Shai name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 
Uh-huh. Uh, all praises to the Most High. And with that, everybody, uh, we're going to go ahead and conclude tonight's class. As always, when I teach, I know we went over a, a little bit over the time, but all praise to the Most High. I hope everybody was blessed and was able to enjoy class tonight. And um, we'll see you the, tomorrow night on uh, Wisdom Wednesdays with Elder Kasadi and HOI Philly. And we'll see you on Thursday night with our HOI Thursday night class. All praises to the Most High, Most High willing. God. All praises, family. May the Most High bless y'all. Keep y'all safe. And death and destruction to America, man. Come me, Shalom. Come me, Shalom. Come me, Shalom. Nah. All praises. Oh, yeah. Before Mike Kyle tried to get at me. Uh, raw for your God. Yo. Oh. Raw for our God. Yahweh. God. All praises. Uh, Shalom. 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 Shalom.